It's time for Twig this week at Google. Stacy Higginbotham is here. J uh, I'm sorry to say Jeff Jarvis has the week off. He's in Italy, but good news. Mike Elgin is here. We're going to give you a tour of the brand new YouTube TV. Just came out today. And find out why Mike says this is the worst news for cable television ever. Coming up next on Twig. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twig. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 399, recorded Wednesday, April 5th, 2017. Oath it! This Week at Google is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. When it comes to the big decision of choosing a mortgage lender, work with one that has your best interest in mind. Use Rocket Mortgage for a transparent, trustworthy home loan process that's completely online at quickenloans.com slash twig. It's time for Twig This Week in Google, the show where we cover, well, it's not really about Google at all. It's kind of, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of false advertising. It's about whatever, <laughs> whatever we want to uh, talk about. Uh, Jeff Jarvis isn't here, so it'll be a little less on uh, the journalism side. He's the professor of journalism at CUNY. But Stacey Higginbotham is here. Of course, she's the queen of IoT, iotpodcast.com. She's also the king of IoT. I don't want to be sexist about anything. She, That's, you could still call me the queen she's of. She's in charge of IoT. <laughs> and at Giga Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Hello. Also joining Hi. us today uh, to, uh, because we don't have Jeff, we've got, but. I'm even more happy. The next to best say, thing. The next best thing from gastronomad.net. Mike Elgin. Yay, Mike. Yay. Long time Glad to be here. here at Twit and uh, writes for Computer World and Fast Company and everybody. I They're love doing this show because even when I listen every single week, I'm always interjecting things right. and nobody can hear me. <laughs> now so. they can. Now you got a mic. Yes. Uh, and by the way, speaking of di uh, Digital uh, Nomad, you're going to be uh, starting the next week, you're going to be going to Spain. And That's right. To get set up for uh, your Barcelona event. That's right. Uh, my wife is uh, spearheading a new business where we have gastronomic experiences where we in invite people to come with us. If anybody out there loves traveling and food, uh, this is going to be a unique experience. So we're going to go out there and do the research. So we're going to be doing the hard work of tasting everything and trying all these different foods and wines and things like that in Aww. Barcelona. And then we're going to go off to Fez, Morocco, and we're going to do the same thing there. Oh, Somebody's got to do it, Leo. Somebody's got to do it. How fun is this? What a great, yeah. what a great idea to do this. Yeah, uh, it's going to be so much fun. Barcelona's first. Yeah. Um, and by the way, I hope Amira cooks a little bit for this because she's the best cook I know. Literally the best cook I know. She is the best cook I know as well. She's probably the best cook in the universe. That's my uh, best <laughs> estimate. And she is going to be teaching people how to make paella and oh, things like that in each nice. location. She does that anyway. Oh. It's really funny. We go to like Greece and then she masters all the Greek cooking and she's doing oh, it better than the Greeks. It. And it's just a, it, it's going to be fantastic. So much uh, fun. And uh, <laughs> now, you know, Stacy, now, you know, now, you know why I want to go. <laughs> yes. I'm like, oh, I also would like to go. <laughs> yes. We're all going to do it, Stacy. Do it. Mike, stop booking. We're just everybody at Twit's going to come. <laughs> the Barcelona <laughs> experience, September 12th through 17th. And then the Morocco experience, September 25th through October 2nd. You're going to do Mexico next year. And I, I'm sure there'll be a lot more to come on this, right? Absolutely. One of the places we're going to be, we're going to be in ten, for 10 days in Prosecco, Italy. So we're going to oh. do a Prosecco one next year. Oh. Lots of people haven't discovered Prosecco, but it, obviously they know the wine, but they, 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 the region is just a fantastic foodie area north of uh, Venice. Actually, so. that's where uh, Jeff is right now. He's in Italy. He's in Perugia for the International Journalist Festival. Have you ever been to yeah. that? No, I haven't. I, you went, right? Uh, no, I've never been. Uh, Om always Matthew. goes. Matthew. And Matthew, Matthew goes. Matthew yeah. always goes. Yeah. I don't know if Ohm always goes. Ohm's going in, a few times because I've seen his pictures from Perugia. Okay. Well, yeah. there. But Matthew, you're right. Matthew goes every year. Matthew Ingram. Yes. Because yeah. Lord help him if he can't post other things on his, like, <laughs> in, it's not Instagram, his Christmas letter or whatever that makes you jealous. I'm oh. like the Canadian lake in the Italy. I know. Pictures. I know. Right. Every oh. summer I watch his Instagram. He's always canoeing out in the lake. It's like, oh, what a life. Oh, it was terrible working with him. I bet. Stacy, I have to file this before too because, you know, I got to get out on the lake. Like, oh. <laughs> Big scoop from uh, Jessica Lessons, The Information, and they've got, you know, they have 
so much uh, good connections. We we knew the information would be really good on covering Google. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, Amir Afradi is really connected. But this one actually is from Kevin McLaughlin. So Kevin is really great. He actually broke a really nice Cisco story a couple days ago, too, about them separating their hardware and software business. And wow. Kevin is a stellar reporter. Like He is yeah. super good. Old school. So, so this is interesting. This, this, the headline is Google Plot's new hardware to take on Echo. But one of the things that's revealed in this is that the uh, the Google's considering making the Google Home, which is right now kind of an Echo competitor uh, speaker, making it also a Wi-Fi router, part of mm -hmm. their Google Mesh Wi-Fi. And this you makes when all they, the sense in the world. Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. Remember when they were rumored to be coming out with the initial router? And they were also rumored to be coming out with Google Home. And everybody assumed, oh, they're going to do this great thing. They're going to add the two together. Every router, uh, which will have two or three in the house or more, will be a Google Home device. And oh, won't that be great? Obvious. And then they didn't do it. Yep. Yeah. No, the OnHub was practically dead on arrival. It was a terrible router. It, it promised all this additional stuff. It had built into it. Uh, didn't it have a Zigbee radio, uh, Stacy, built into it? It still does. <laughs> yeah, but it was never turned on, right? You can't. Um, I think you can actually control your hues with the OnHub router. Oh, okay. I think that's actually a thing you can do. And it supports your August lock with the Bluetooth in it. Oh, wow. <laughs> there, so I, You could do two I, things. <laughs> but they don't, they, do they still sell that? And does it, if you have an OnHub, does it automatically join mm -hmm. with a Google Wi-Fi to make a mesh? So the, the OnHub does work with Google Wi-Fi. Let's okay. see if I can still buy an OnHub router. Um, I had one ordered the minute they announced it and then got cold feet when I read Ron Amadio's review of it in Ars Technica, and he said, the thing is slow as molasses. So Kevin likes his. Um, yeah. There's two versions. There's the Google version, and there was the TP-Link version. Because right, they made the, they actually made the hardware, yeah. Um, the TP-Link one doesn't seem to be available. Interesting. You can buy the Asus one. I'm adding it to my Google Store oh, card. I didn't know Asus sold one. That's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's this round black thing it's also 129 dollars, just like the google home um so i love the idea and you're right this, this somebody's in the chat room saying this isn't hardware this is just software right this should be an easy thing to turn on maybe well, it depends no. does because do they have the mic the far field the microphones mic. exactly and do they have a processor that can handle the always on listening right, right. so those two things actually need to be there in Here's my here. There are a couple things here. It makes all the sense in the world to do this. And actually, I'm seeing a lot of IoT devices like light switches and even things like light bulbs that have Wi-Fi repeaters built into them. So combining a device that's going to be in every room with a Wi-Fi repeater makes tons of sense. Or, you know, making it into a mesh, however you want to think about it. I know they're different. Um, but with this Google Home thing, I don't know how many people put their routers still in a place that is accessible like a, a listening device needs to be. Does that make that's sense? That's exactly the right that's exactly the right problem for this. And I, I actually think that in the larger scheme of things, uh, fifteen years from now, ten years from now, we'll be looking back at this era and be, and say, Remember that Amazon Echo? What was it called? The Echo? What, <laughs> you think? This whole category yeah, really? it'll be gone because they own you know, this they, category right now. It's, it's just a stopgap until we're all wired up with microphones on our physical person. And, and so one of the things Stacy's talking about is, is, the, is the fatal problem with this, which is that you tuck your router down behind the desk and behind the – you don't put it out there where you can hear it and, and where it can hear you. And so that's a, that's a real problem. Actually, the best place for this sort of uh, utility is in light bulbs. Light bulbs always have electricity. They're always in places where you are, like you think of a reading light or a lamp or lights in the bathroom or lights over the dining room table. If those are all wired up with microphones, that would be much better because that's where the human-centric activity is. But ultimately, as soon as we have the ability to interact with our virtual assistants through our smart glasses and through our wearable devices, then the behavior will be identical. We'll talk and Alexa will talk back. But then we'll be able to do it outside. We'll be able to do it no matter where we are. And that'll be better. Ultimately, I think that's where it's going. And until somebody like Apple comes out with smart glasses, I don't think that's going to happen. Well, so that's why I thought, so I wrote a big thing when the ear pods came out from Apple, how this is the beginning of kind of always on listening potential. Yeah. So exactly yeah. what you're talking about. I will say, though, I think Amazon, we may forget the device, but what they're building is with their... Um, 
ABS, so She Who Shall Not Be Named Voice Services, what they're building there is basically the way you talk to any device. So if they can win with basically the voice UI, because that's what they're doing. So if I talk to my thermostat, these are the words I use to do it because I have a thermostat with, you know, uh, Amazon Echo integration in it. That's going to be, that's what they're doing now. So I can totally be like, oh yeah, there used to be a standalone device and all it did was listen. But in the future, everything should have some sort of voice capability, which is actually freaking yeah. scary if we worry about hacking because you can't turn the mic off on all these other things as easily. Do you think people are, uh, I mean, certainly privacy has become a big concern. Of course, President Trump on Monday signed the, the bill overturning the ISP privacy regulations that were promulgated last year by the FCC. We've seen the CIA WikiLeaks dump and now a new hack that shows that almost all, something like 95% of all smart TVs can be hacked remotely to turn on mm -hmm. cameras and microphone. Um, do you think that the general public's awareness of this uh, is high enough and their concern about privacy is high enough to actually stymie the development of these voice services? Oh, for sure. I have tons of people who are like, uh, I'm interested in the Amazon Echo, but, oh, I don't want anything always listening to me. I, I mean, well, I get actually, lots of that. Yeah. There was actually a new poll that came out yesterday on this, and shockingly, 75% of adults said they would not let investigators, the FBI or whatever, tap into their internet activity uh, to help combat terrorism. This is, what, this is way up. This is up from 67%. Uh, in June 2013. So I think that all the news around hacking and surveillance is starting to have an, an effect on the public, which kind of surprised me. Usually the public is willing to, you know, they'll give up all their privacy if they can save $5 on something. And, you know, they tend to not be aware of the larger implications of what happens when you give up all your privacy. But I think all the stories coming out are chipping away at the resistance and the uh, lack of awareness in the public. And I think we're getting to a point where people are going to really start seeking out encryption in, in, in a meaningful way and, and, and looking for, for privacy. And uh, I saw a really interesting quote that I retweeted this morning, which I think was a, a fantastic uh, perspective on privacy and on encryption. Encryption, it's according to this quote, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, is, is one of the only technologies that radically favors the private, the privacy of the person, uh, and it doesn't go in both ways. Most technologies um, hacking or anti-hacking, it can benefit hackers. It can benefit the surveillance uh, crowd. It can b benefit both sides. Um, encryption benefits only the side of the person who's trying to keep their information private and offers nothing to the other side. And that's why it's it, it's it's fundamentally in the future going to be tied to the question of human rights. Like, do you have a right to have a private conversation? If so, then you have the right to encryption and end encryption. So. Um, I think that's a really interesting perspective, but I do think it's becoming uh, a political issue. The well, trust of the government is low. The trust of companies are low. And so people are going to take that on in the privacy sphere. Well, yeah, and if all that's true, does that stymie this technology, though? I mean, uh, should Amazon say, well, I guess we won't do the Echo now? Should Google say, well, we probably want to add voice to our wireless uh, hubs? So with Amazon, I think there, there's two things. There's government efforts, and then there's... I don't actually trust the government with my data. One, general incompetence, two, surveillance ep efforts, that kind of thing. I actually trust Amazon with my data. And Isn't that ironic? <laughs> it, it's super ironic. Well, what's the, um, but I've always said that. What's the worst Amazon can do? Try to sell you something. What's the worst the government can do? The sky's the they limit. Can, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, they could put me in jail. They could kill you. Um, or kill well, me. The I, jail well, the, killing. The, the thing is that Amazon itself is hopefully a closed system, whereas government surveillance, what they're looking for, backdoors and things like that, can, which can be exploited by by others, like having end to end. Well, but that's the nexus, right? Because uh, the, right. the the government goes to Amazon and says, "You got that uh, Echo in there? Let's turn that on, if you don't mind." And the, yeah. and, and and Amazon's helpless to say no. Uh, so it's, it is really the nexus of this stuff. You may not. Trust government, you may trust Amazon, but if you've got an echo in your house, Stacey, you're giving the government that that microphone, in effect. Um, in effect. Now, I assume that Amazon pays attention. Like, Amazon doesn't roll over like AT&T did when the government was like, hey, yo, can, can we tap into your major network and spy on all your users? So far, Amazon is not doing that, to my knowledge. Um, yeah. And there, I've, I've, was... I've talked to people in Amazon about this they they are not willing to do 
doesn't that. mean they're going to win that battle, by the way. It doesn't, but I know they're going to fight it. And yeah, they're going to fight it, but they're, 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 they'll probably lose. So so what? <laughs> you know, fighting is more a PR thing than it is uh, a real, I mean, I understand they don't want to do it, but. There was a recent episode of uh, the show The Good Fight, which is a spinoff of The Good Wife. And it's a very good show. It's exactly like The Good Wife minus the two previous main characters. And they did an episode recently where there was an Amazon Echo-like device in the in the office of one of the lawyers, and it was it was subpoenaed or whatever. They grabbed the device, they have, uh, whatever they call it, and they got all this data and all these conversations, and it recorded everything. And that's just simply not accurate, as as Stacy's saying. I mean, if the device doesn't actually record when you don't trigger the secret keyword, then there's not a recording for the for the government or anybody else to 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 get their hands on a after and the so, fact, but 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 after the, the government fact. could, I don't see any reason why the government couldn't say to Amazon. Now maybe Amazon would fight it, probably try to make it public. But mm -hmm. as we know, thanks to the Patriot Act, the government has ways to not to keep this private. So it may even already be happening. Well, like uh, everything else, don't it's you gonna... think they could go to the Amazon and say, "Turn on Stacy's uh, Echo and and just let's hear everything"? I mean, I think I think that will happen uh, if that's possible. I mean, it will happen if it's possible. Let me just say it more forcefully. Right. And, and then it once it does happen, there'll be a court case, I mean, and then it'll go to court. Microphone and camera you happen to carry in your pocket all the time. So, so that's what oh. I was going to say. I'm like, this. There is nothing to stop that from happening with my phone, and which is why know, people the who are the phone paranoid, server, the phone companies are absolutely in the pocket of the back pocket yes. of the government. So, fight it. So, I mean, <laughs> here <laughs> and take it. What do you want? Anything I mean, want. honestly, if I were reporting on something really dicey, like if I were Lawrence Wright, the guy who writes for The New Yorker and does all the Al Qaeda reporting, I'd be worried. You know what? Yep. I would not have an echo. No. Uh, but that's oh, so that's getting back to this original question, which we still haven't answered, which is, is this going to stop this technology in its tracks? Do people care enough? Are they worried enough? Are they aware enough that they're just going to say, well, no, we're not going to buy this? It hasn't yet. Yeah. The answer is no, it's not going to stop it. Because nothing the convenience is going to stop. outweighs it, right? Yeah, nothing is going to stop the inevitability of a world in which we're constantly interacting with a virtual assistant by voice. That is happening. Right. And at the same time, I think it's safe to say that there is no measure the government or security professionals or companies can take that will keep this stuff private. So you will be carrying a microphone in your pocket, wearing it on your head. It'll be in your living room and maybe all three, and if a government is determined enough, they, or a bad guy is determined enough, they'll get it. I think that's one of the lessons of the of the second to the last Wiki, WikiLeaks uh, thing about the CIA. We learned, you know, with the, they, they can hack TVs and all that kind of stuff. Really, the, the, the way that a surveillance-minded or espionage-minded organization thinks about these things is that, let me see, what microphones are already in place? There's right. there's the phones, yeah, there's the TV. Have, why should we have to put one in if they've already got several? Exactly. Right. It's too crowded. Too many microphones. <laughs> and so just hack one, you know, and you have surveillance. And there surveillance. will be people. Yeah, like there's going to be people. Like my mom, she does not – she drives like a car that doesn't have automatic locks because she doesn't want any electronics really? in her car. Um, yeah. She's a real interesting character I sometimes. Be, I, you know, I, I will, yeah. I, but she didn't want to turn in her Note 7 because uh, she really liked that phone. <laughs> right, right. See, I'm like, I'm like ah, people, people, they are made of contradictions. Go figure. Um, well, you, you know, it's, it, but, but you make a great point. The, the, the world, the pre-digital the pre world was understandable. Uh, and, and a perfect example is bugging phones. When you used to have to bug a phone, you had these big phones with the dial or the rotary dial or the, 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 the button dial. And when that phone was hung up, there was a physical mechanism that prevented you from using the microphone built into the phone. So what they did was they'd have to break into the, to the house or whatever and install a separate microphone in the hardware of the phone or inside the receiver of the phone. And that was doable because there was a lot of air and space in, in there. But Unless they, if they couldn't break in, they couldn't use the microphone present in the phone because of the physical mechanism. You could take a phone apart and see exactly how it was physically disconnected. And this gets to not anything terribly newsy, but something that I spend a lot of time thinking about because right now I'm watching The Americans because it's back on and it's an awesome show. Great show. And we are we are watching this and all of the shenanigans they get into and we're like, God, it must be super hard to be a spy right now with cameras everywhere and <laughs> yeah. the ability, like, I'm like, 
we were talking about uh, AT&T got a contract for an Air Force base to do, you know, connected perimeter monitoring. And I'm like, oh, you know, think of all the times that you've seen your characters in a TV show break into, you know, some highly secure facility by cutting through the chain link fence. And I'm like, yeah, not going to happen anymore. Yeah. Tradecraft, so, spycraft has to have changed a lot. But uh, I yeah, think, they won't tell you about it, though. I think the, yeah, right. I think the bad guys... <laughs> Uh, know that uh, if you want to have a private conversation, you go out in the field and you talk to somebody personally. If you want to have a private conversation over the internet, you use PGP or something similar and encrypt. Uh, the the people who really want to have privacy know how to do it, and it's not hard. Even if, yeah. and, and we talked about this yesterday on uh, Security Now, Steve and I are both of the opinion that the, the, the UK government is, uh, on the verge now of banning strong encryption or yeah. requiring a government backdoor. Uh, Russia's already done that. And uh, I think Steve and I give, are of the opinion, given the current climate in Washington, D.C., that's inevitable in the United States as well, that, the, that there will be a law, Congress will pass a law uh, that will require either a backdoor or make strong encryption illegal or both. And... It will make a difference in the cell phone manufacturers. Apple and Samsung and Google will have to, you know, weaken the security of the cell phone. Uh, it won't stop people from using uh, encryption apps. You may be illegal to use. Imagine a world where it's illegal to use WhatsApp or WhatsApp. Did Carrie Doctro imagine this for like one oh, of yeah. his little brothers? Yeah, his like little brother exactly. <laughs> uh, it, but but nevertheless. Because the math is out there, the algorithms are simple. You can write uh, a public key crypto algorithm on a T-shirt, literally. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that means that there will be bespoke encryption apps. In other words, bad guys will not be deterred because they have an incentive to go the extra mile to, to in encrypt and, and provide themselves mm -hmm. with privacy. It will only be us, the good guys, the normal people, who will be surveilled and surveilled in a hundred different ways by a hundred different entities. And I don't see any way to really avoid that. What yeah, really we, worries me is that the the hackers and 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 malicious actors will also have this uh, that we won't be able to protect ourselves any longer against malicious actors. If my phone no right. longer is encrypted, then everything that's on my phone is available not just to government but to anybody else who uh, wants to take the trouble to get it. One right. of the aspects about privacy violation that I think is radically underappreciated by the public is whether something is able to be done at a mass scale or has to be targeted. So perfect example is the recent CIA revelations right. versus the NSA revelations. The CIA the stuff the was NSA, all targeted. Exactly. The NSA, NSA could stuff was all a wide net. Yeah. And, and exactly. And that's a huge difference. And I wrote a column recently about the nature of biometrics. People think, well, biometrics, biometrics, fingerprint, face recognition, iris, vein recognition. There are all these different kinds of biometrics. But the public needs to understand that the one type of biometric is really dangerous, and that is face recognition. And everything is going toward face recognition now. And here's why it's dangerous. It can be done in mass. You can capture somebody's biometric data, their face, from... 300 yards away with a camera, um, their face is on the internet and it can be entered into and is being entered into various algorithms for identifying face recognition. There's a website. So there was a there was an interesting hoax that went around on Facebook the other day, uh, 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 last month, called Face Face Zam, and it was a it was a marketing it was a bad marketing hoax publicity stunt type of thing. But basically, it was a story that circulated that said that. Anyone could track you down by just scanning your Facebook photos. They could take your Facebook photos and then find, find you elsewhere on the internet. Well, what's funny about that is that actually exists. That's totally doable right now. So there's a, there's a website you can go to called Find Face. It's a Russian face recognition site. You can upload somebody's face and they'll show you their Twitter account half the time. Half the time it doesn't work, half the time it does. But the point is that face recognition is something that is like NSA harvesting of 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 metadata on phone and email records it can be done by the millions and so face recognition really really should bother people uh it's the least secure the most privacy invading form of biometrics by far we should reiterate that face sam which is by the way a takeoff on shazam the music recognition tool is a hoax is not it is real. a hoax the telegraph was fooled by this
But fine face but is fine real. Fine face is real. Well, and we, yeah, I mean, we know this is actually a fairly trivial thing to do, right? Well, well you so can do I, crazy. I, oh, go on. I was going to tell people about crazy contouring to make their face not recognizable. <laughs> You're yeah. the queen of contour. I but, love but it. There, there again, uh, this is another realization we're all going to get to at some point. The <laughs> only way to have privacy is through disinformation and not good makeup. protection. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's why I always wear heavy makeup when I'm when I'm uh, having my picture taken. But I, I gave a, uh, my readers a step by step way to in in about 60 seconds, probably you can go from having somebody's photo to having their home address. Um, mm -hmm. Super easy. Go to find face, upload the picture. They'll show you the Twitter account. You'll get the full name. You take the name. You go to family tree now, run it through the database. You have their you have their their home address, you have the, all their relatives, you have their age, you have the gender, you have everything. Um, takes no time at all. This is right now. So these face recognition algorithms are getting like way better every single year. They're actually better and, than the governments. <laughs> That's yeah, the irony and, of it. House yes, Oversight Committee uh, last week uh, re re released a report on the FBI's face recognition program that said approximately half of adult Americans' photographs are stored in facial recognition databases that are accessed by the FBI without their knowledge or consent in the hunt for suspected criminals. About 80% of the photos in the network are non-criminal entries, including pictures from driver's license and passports. The algorithms used to identify matches are inaccurate about 15% of the time. By the way, that's not bad, 15% of the time, and are more likely to misidentify black people than white people. So... Uh, That's because we do. Silicon Valley trains our uh, yeah, facial recognition yeah, software. Yeah, Yay. they all look alike, right? Uh, no, <laughs> no federal law controls this technology. No court decision limits it. It's completely out of control. Well, F Facebook's is really amazing. Facebook's Facebook works. Facebook's <laughs> Facebook is good. works, and one of the reasons one of the reasons it works, it uses uh, artificial intelligence, and what it does is basically, you can show a person. So people upload lots and lots of pictures and they can, you know, process those. But you can upload. Uh, so let's say Stacy uh, uploads four pictures of herself at a party um, and her face is present in all of those. You can take a fifth picture from that party where her face is not even shown. And you'll know she was and Facebook will identify yeah. it. Because it, yeah. it it also knows the sweater. It is, and it's the color. uncanny, isn't it? It's it's gotten very good. I've noticed that several times in Facebook. Uh, the irony is, as you, to your original point, Stacy, <laughs> Facebook knowing who you are, who you say you are, is merely annoying. The government arresting you, saying you match the picture of the crime, the criminal, uh, and putting you in jail is a lot more than annoying. So, fifteen percent that, failure rates is significant. I was going to yeah, say, you, you kind of made that wasn't, you said that wasn't so bad. I'm like, actually, I feel like that's pretty terrible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, one in seven, we screw up. No big deal. Eh, it I happens. Mean, what are you going to do? Once you end up in, once you end up in jail, they take your fingerprints right. as part of like the whole process. And well, this God, is all pretty it, grim. I mean, uh, is there any uh, good news? Uh, if well, I were, if I were Amazon, I would say, well, we better not do the echo. That was a bad idea. If I were Google, I'd say, let's not put voice in our, uh, on, on, on Hub and uh, Google Wi-Fi, I mean, are uh, they, or no, no, they're going to go st well, full steam ahead. We don't, we don't have any control of this at all. Well, voice and face recognition are different things. No, but um. uh, right. No, I understand. <laughs> voice is probably even more accurate. Um, uh, but they're not, they're not able to authenticate on voice yet. Right. So we've got time. Actually, Google does authenticate on voice. I don't know how accurate it is with uh, the Google Assistant. You can unlock your phone. So when you install Google <gasps> Assistant on an Android really? phone, yeah, it'll say, okay, I know your voice now. By the way, you only have to say, okay, you know who three times. It says, okay, I know your voice now. Do you want me to unlock your phone when you ask me for something? Oh, yeah, it does offer me that. I don't know how accurate it is, but the point is this they're is doing the, that. This is going to be one of the benefits of eyeglasses-based um, uh, interaction with a virtual assistant because it will, it could, it could be designed so that it will only receive voice input from the, the near, you know, a foot away. And so you don't have to authenticate your personal voice and be identified uh, in that way. It, you, just the fact that it's on your face means that you're the only one who can talk to it. And then it goes through bone conduction. So you're the only one who can hear it. So there's a level of privacy that's improved theoretically in one, uh, one aspect. Um, but back to the face recognition thing, there's good news and bad news. You asked for good news, but first I'm going to give you a little bit more bad news, okay. which is that, that with you really don't have control with, with, with the social networks because 
other people can identify you. So, for example, right. I have pictures of you, Leo, and I can go in and say, oh, that's Leo Laporte. And now and Facebook I can, I, knows who I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you had nothing, had to, do nothing to do with it. it. There's no opting yeah. out other yeah. other than like wearing a, you know, a clown mask all the time or something like that. Now, the good the good or news is this is good contouring. Right. Stay good contouring. Give us I was going to say, my good news is you can get good contouring mm. videos in cheap, yeah. cheap powders. Next online. week on uh, Twig, <laughs> Stacy's going to show you how to do the contouring and I'm going to teach you how to talk like this. <laughs> hey, there, there's actually, there's actually an artist who, 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 uh, specializes in, uh, that sort of thing. I actually mentioned them in, in, in the, the column that I mentioned a minute ago. And let me see if I can find the we're name all of this person. Sounding like baskets, the clown before we're done. Yeah. Here. And looking so, so like there's a Louis Anderson. <laughs> it's a designer named Kardashian. Adam Harvey. <laughs> so, so, so a designer named Adam Harvey has hairstyles and makeup that fools fake recognition. So there, there's like yes. it's o hair and makeup tips. Yeah, show yeah, it. So, it's really cool. All right. Yeah, it's uh, so we'll Adam Harvey. He, uh, Adam Harvey also has fabrics that fool face recognition computers, and, and and does it in a crazy way. Like there's a coat that they that he has that has. It looks just like kind of like camouflage or something. It has this random pattern, but face recognition algorithms perceive it as having face, faces all over it. But the problem is, you have to walk around looking like this person. <laughs> See, but this could be this could be stylish at some point in well, time. How exactly. long? Okay, you saw it here first. How long before this is the fad? Everybody starts dressing and wearing their hair in weird. Okay, Holy so I cow. would totally do some of this stuff. Like this pixelated makeup the dude is wearing, I think that's pretty cool. Or this lady, this tiger lady down yeah. here. Yeah. And would that's, you do the hair like that? Uh, I already have blue hair. I just need to make it straight and comb <laughs> half of it over my face. <laughs> Test patterns for stylists. These block. These are. This is not just like crazy style. These block... Face detection algorithms. OpenCV, EB Learn, Vera Look, and Apple Face Detection. Yeah, so the what idea the is... What? This is crazy. They, they learn where, like, what eyes look like on a face, right? They they learn something that with a nose in this spot and two eyes in this spot and lips, that this is a person, and then they track, they match against that. That's why taking <sighs> big blocks of color and putting it in weird spots fools it because it's like, wait, is that the eye? No, that's the eye. What's it doing on her cheek? Ah. Wow. The other thing you could do, <laughs> and we actually were going to, Colleen was going to build this. She now ironically works for Facebook. Uh, we were going to put a, uh, build either a collar or uh, maybe uh, uh, a little uh, uh, tiara that has UV lights in it. You don't see them. Human eye doesn't see them. It blinds cameras. Mm -hmm. You look like a glowing yeah. ball to a camera. Uh, you could, I, that's another fashion. I could see people going around wearing headbands with, you know, lights that, that block cameras. That's actually a, probably a really good product. Should we, let's do the Kickstarter oh. now. So yeah. here's a related thing and I'm trying to find the video. Um, I think I saw it at South by Southwest. It, it was an IOT device that somebody built that had, it detected IR from surveillance cameras and every time it passed and a surveillance camera. It detected IR and it would tap the person who was wearing this shirt. It would give them a ah. haptic zip on their shoulder. Ah. So like mm. it was like zzz, twitch, twitch. Every like he was walking down the streets of London. It was pretty cool. Wow. If you are going to so, do that, cool. chat room saying it'd probably be better to use infrared than ultraviolet. I don't know which would blind a camera, but oh. <laughs> pick one end of the spectrum. Clearly, there's going to be an arms race. This is just bizarre, just yeah. bizarre. Uh, I mean, we're headed rapidly toward uh, 1984. I think yeah. it's interesting, by the way, a number of movie theaters in the country are showing 1984 once again in a yeah. kind of uh, quiet political statement. But we are really uh, approaching 1984. Where the, remember the, the telescreens in 1984, not, you not only watched them, they watched you. It was a two-way mm -hmm. device in your house. Hey, we've got them yeah. now. It's called a Samsung TV. We installed them voluntarily. And, you know, it's ironic that, you know, 1984 is one of the great novels. It, you know, a lot of people are assigned it in high school and, and therefore don't remember a word of it. And so a lot of people are rediscovering it and reading it again. But it's ironic that the that, that this novel was brought to us by, by England, by the UK, essentially. And the UK is essentially, and China maybe, uh, leading the charge into that very world. Yeah. Uh, there are more surveillance cameras uh, per square foot or per person or something in the UK than anywhere else in the world. And now
they're trying to ban encryption. So that's kind of like not learning from history and not learning from literature. Well, it goes both ways. I mean, I think that uh, maybe the reason 1984 and Brave New World were written by British writers is because they were well aware of the tendency in, in the British state to do that. Uh, anyway, it's the most so, so, most surveilled big city in the world. London. London. So, yeah. so I promise I promise some good news in all this, and that is yes. that as of today, I believe uh, the Google Photos app has a new feature that uses this in a more convenient way. So when you open a picture oh, <laughs> in Google Photos, any photo, there, there's there's always a little information, the little I, lowercase I with a circle uh, that has existed. But now when you po poke that, it'll show you. Uh, it, a, a screen that shows all the people and what their names are and you tapping that photo shows you all the pictures of that person. So it's a more convenient way to, <laughs> uh, to see everything Google knows about you in terms of face recognition. <laughs> By the way, I apparently, I didn't know this, our sponsor Audible is also offering uh, their audio version of 1984 for free uh, right now. So Highly recommended. I did not see this yes. Pepsi ad. Let's watch it together. This is the uh, Pepsi ad with Kendall Jenner that was pulled by Pepsi just today because everybody oh. was so upset over it. And you're going to, Stacy, because you're in charge of woking Leo, <laughs> you're going to explain. I wouldn't be woke without you. You're going to explain oh <laughs> why this ad is so horrific. So we're on a rooftop. A guy's playing the cello. It's a big city. There's some uh, sparks. There's a join the conversation protest. It's not exactly a protest. It's join the conversation protest. Everybody, oh, there's peace signs. Okay. So that's probably non-controversial, though. Everybody likes peace. And then somebody's drawing. She's making her sign while drinking Pepsi. Uh, and that's Kendall Jenner. Is that, is that by the way, who that is? Because I don't. Is yes. That, yes. Yes. And she's Kendall famous Jenner. because she's Bruce Jenner's daughter? She's famous because she's a Kardashian. She's a Kardashian. Well, she yeah, she's the Jenner of the Kardashians. So she, Kylie and Kendall and Kim and Chloe and. So wait a minute, a Kardashian interbreeded with Jenner? Oh my yeah. God, that shouldn't be legal. Is that legal? That's Chris it's Jenner. It's unethical. <laughs> Chris, Chris Jenner is Kim Kardashian's mom. <laughs> oh my God, my world is blowing up. Okay, so she's wearing a kind of a metal dress. And she's a model, right? Which she, she which, is which Kendall model. is a model, right? Yes. Yeah. So she's posing. The photographer's taking pictures of her. But while the protest, oh, the protest is going by. Join the conversation. The join the conversation protest, which is a really as innocuous a protest as you can have. Yeah. Join the. I'm not protesting anything. I'm just asking you to join the conversation. But wait a minute. Kendall Jenner has spotted this for some reason there's still a guy playing cello solo in his now in his loft warehouse wait a minute his eye has been drawn by the join the conversation protest or no by a can of black pepsi he's drinking that now he's going to his balcony of his massive loft in new york city beautiful people are having a cafe lunch there's a, a an islam a woman who's wearing a um a, a, a burqa or whatever. What do they call the, just the little, uh, the headscarf? Headscarf, yeah. Headscarf. And then there she is. Oh, she's disappointed uh, by her photos. She doesn't like the pictures. She's looking out the window. There's the join the conversation protest. People are very angry that some people are not joining the protest. She grabs her camera. She's going to snap some photos of the, oh, there's the guy with the cello. He's a, uh, now he's walking in the guys. Uh, there's somebody break dancing, playing the guitar. And uh, this is a long damn commercial. By the way, Pepsi is getting more attention from this commercial that they got in trouble for than anything they've ever done before. Yeah. This is their I, I like to teach the world to sing moment. Wait, even more than when Michael Jackson caught on fire? Oh, no, I'll say you're right, you're right, you're right. If, if they could get this guy's hair to catch on fire, then. So apparently Kendall uh, Jenner has locked eyes with somebody in the uh, in the protest. And he's he's saying, come on. Oh, he's the cello guy. Join me. Yeah, he's the cello guy. Is that her? Yeah. Okay. She's like eight yeah. years old. Okay. Wait a minute. Her hair has gone from blonde to brunette for reasons we don't know. She's wiping off her lipstick. She's joining the conversation. Now, these are the most peaceful, happy protesters ever. But for some reason, there's a police presence. Clearly not Berkeley. Yeah. So Kendall has decided that she is going to give this stone cold fox policeman a pepsi wow i'm touched 
This is the generations coming together. And then the lady with the hijab. headscarf. Hijab. hijab, that's it. Takes the picture. And the crowd cheers because everyone's everyone's hugging. They're all they're all drinking Pepsi. It's so cool. And Leo, by by talking about it, aren't we in fact joining the conversation? We have joined the conversation. We're all joining with the Pepsi generation. Live Boulder. Yeah, there's nothing more bold than joining the conversation. That is a bold statement. Drinking Pepsi is pretty bold. Live louder. Drinking yeah. Pepsi is bold. There's a person Just, with bluish hair in there. Live for now. That. So why is this controversial in the least? So <laughs> I think it's just co-opting what it's many co-opting people... that one beautiful image, right of the of the African American woman with her uh, dress flowing and the tax squad coming at her at her that that image, right? Why it makes me. I was just going to say I'm it's just co-opting an, oh, a fine Pepsi. <laughs> Pepsi. Just listen. Isn't this refreshing sounding? No. That, that's what a beer sounds like when you crack that open. <laughs> no, that's refreshing. I thought you said there was only one uh, one ad. Um, <laughs> it's not an ad if you're not getting paid for it. Good point. Like. So I, I just think this this the, the I think that people who are engaging in protests are awfully touchy about having the whole concept of protesting being co-opted by this shameless naked okay, commercialization. I'll, I'll, I'll go with yes. you on that. And yeah, and, and, and so. Ahead, there's please. also, there's a couple things. So one, it's co-opting with this stupid, I mean, like if you're going to say something, Pepsi, say something, not, not a stupid, join the, join the conversation. conversation. That's just BS. Um, and so in people today, you know, they're smart, <laughs> they're cynical. They're. I would say this is, if before <laughs> there was Twitter, there would have been nothing about this ad. Well, oh, there, well there, yeah, there, sure. there wasn't had People just would like have this it. before there was Twitter, and this nothing is, happened. This is it's called. This is, I'd like to buy the world a Coke. It's yeah. the same thing. Yeah, it's the, this is a, the Twitter outrage mill, which yes. is, actually is starting to scare me. Now, I agree, this is a dopey ad. I don't think it's particularly controversial. It's just dopey. But the but what I find interesting, and the reason I'm bringing this up on this show, is because this is this is Twitter at work, right? It's yes. completely the Twitter backlash. When they say there's a backlash, it's all on Twitter. Yeah, it's on Facebook exactly. too. <laughs> Except nobody saw it because. <laughs> well, and there's. I I really I'm worried about the power of Twitter and Twitter outrage. Yeah, this I wouldn't worry about that. Really? Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, okay. So people are now. upset on Twitter. Um, people are upset on Facebook. These things come and go. And I think it gives people an outlet for a time when they feel like nothing is in their control. And it also helps promote genuine social awareness and change in a way. Like, I think you're just becoming more aware of how people are different from each other. And I think what's hard is... We still don't treat the internet like it's real people on the other end. And I think that's going to be something that is decades of change, right? And it'll happen, hopefully. I don't know if that made any sense. It does. And 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 I think, you know, it, it is a good and a bad thing. I agree with you completely. I mean, if we have to, as we as we get sucked into virtual reality and into the Twitter sphere and all that kind of stuff, we have to always do a gut check and think about what is the actual world as we experience it like. For example, I personally talk to lots of people all the time and not a single one has been outraged or cared at all. Well, my about point this precisely. Issue. I mean, if we could if we could just ignore Twitter and it could just exist in a vacuum, you know, or do, or whatever, do whatever it does, and it didn't then bleed into the real world, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But it's actually that's the point, right? That it's that it's that's it un exerting undue influence on actual policy. But I don't think this is bad. I don't think it's bad that people said, "Hey, yo, Pepsi, your ad sucked because it was in it was offensive to people who actually protest and do things they care about." Um, it, you know, used Kendall freaking who, Jenner. But who cares? So it's people just an do ad. care. Ads are dopey. All ads are dopey. Ads, All ads okay, use celebrities. No, ads. Ads are not just dopey. Ads actually are a huge part of the cultural conversation. Think about it. We still talk about certain, like the where's the beef lady, or we all knew about Michael Jackson. Nobody would and be his talking Pepsi about ad. this Pepsi ad if it weren't for the Twitter outrage engine. It would have just gone away without a trace. I don't think, I, I don't know. I think I the mean, outrage I is, is, 
is is partly based on the content of of protests nowadays. So so yeah. for example, yes, we have this trivialized culture, but there are people out there trying to affect meaningful change, and you and and people who are deeply invested in the Black Lives Matter uh, uh, um, movement. Um, see these protests as a kind of surrogate for the kind of protests they've done. And what they're what they're marching for is, you know, people's lives. I mean, it's it's a very big, heavy thing. Or, All right. you know, a lot of people right. are, are protesting the president. So He's maybe this is a bad example. But you guys, don't you agree that the Twitter outrage engine is given disproportionate uh, power in the media? Absolutely. Uh, yes, because it's easy to find a story. Like, here's yeah, a great lazy, example. It's lazy reporting is the United uh, kicking the girls off the airline for wearing leggings that Excellent. were traveling on Excellent a travel example budget. of the instant outrage engine. Yes, I could not believe that this story, quote unquote, had legs <laughs> and um, <laughs> made it over. I mean, granted, it was a weekend, so slow news. But in and, and yes, I, I think United was totally in the wrong. But I was like, what the heck is happening People uh, look at uh, people it, it always are outraged. You know, people wake up and they have outrage before their Wheaties. The difference is that now they have this outlet, and most importantly, that that by itself would be meaningless. And most importantly, the news media picks it up and says people are outraged instead of some grumpy people tweeted. Well, then what about Fox News? Fox News and public TV kind of news is the original outrage machine. I mean, think about maybe it's well, let me, slightly Well, let me show you trivial. this, but you've probably read this. Joseph Bernstein, BuzzFeed. Never mind the Russians. Meet the bot king who helps Trump win Twitter. Did you read about this guy, a microchip? Yeah. So this yeah. guy is, a, a, you know, Midwestern, not a Russian, Midwestern guy. Don't look it up on Twitter, though. It's gone. They took it down. Yeah, but they take it down all the time, and he comes back yeah. all the time. Yeah. He's been banned countless numbers of time the example they're giving is the most recent susan rice unmasking he decided that he decided this guy decided that was going to be a story so he began blasting out dozens of tweets and retweets he tweets it would be nice to get susan rice trending and and then he did it now this guy is apparently a web developer with good skills he hides his traces very well so that nobody able really is really able to figure out his real identity he agreed to talk to buzzfeed because he's a publicity junkie as well. Um, over the 24 hours following his own call to arms, Microchip tweeted or retweeted more than 300 times about rice, including everything from a photoshopped image of Donald Trump eating her head out of a taco bowl to demands that she die in jail, almost always accompanied by the tag hashtag Susan Rice. And then he implored others to do this. These are these these are the tweets. This is one. This micro magic jingle is gone but he'll have another account because it's very easy to create accounts on twitter um by 9 a.m the next day the tag was tweeted 20,000 times an hour was trending on twitter 34,000 times an hour by 11 a.m and then it got the most important retweet of all the retweet from the president and this basically here's his here's his triumphant tweet that evening starting with a single uh cernovich article we knocked this one out of the park we can do this every day just like we did before and it becomes a story. They know how to make it a story. And that this guy is one guy who's manipulating a Twitter. He says he, he so he, he BuzzFeed News got an interview with him. And uh, he says, I feel like I'm a scientist showing electricity to natives that have been convinced electricity is created by Satan. So they murder the scientist. He he says he's discovered how to manipulate and use Twitter. He says, it's yep. all us, not Russians, and we're not going to stop. Um, this is, this is, now, I, I'm i not bashing on Twitter again. I know you I know you don't like that, but I'm not Leave doing it that. Because it's not Twitter's fault. Twitter just exists like any social network. It's really the fault of the media that gives this all this weight, because this is just a guy running a bunch of bots. But it's given weight. Twitter's outraged. And actually, they don't ever say Twitter's outraged, because they know that would mean... That would diminish the importance of the article. They say people are outraged. Thousands of people are protesting. So, Leo, I, I, I know that there is a certain amount of fatigue around bashing Twitter, but why isn't it Twitter's fault? The, we can't wait until every human being is virtuous because we've been waiting be Twitter's a long fault. time. It wouldn't be because it wouldn't be a problem if it weren't picked up and then covered by mainstream media. 
But it wouldn't go viral if Twitter didn't. Uh, if Twitter were able to block bots, if Twitter well, gave Twitter could do a better job with this moderation. guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, for, for example, uh, um, like you look at uh, Google Plus or Facebook. Facebook has a real names policy. Google Plus used to. Um, Google Plus is totally closed outside, or so is Facebook. So doing bots and things like that is a little harder. Um, I think there's just a lot more. There, there's so much damage that's done uh, for a nominal benefit by Twitter. Uh, and, and and so I think that you, by the way, the this media's... guy has he showed BuzzFeed dozens of accounts he has ready to take over when he gets suspended because he always does get suspended, but he uses VPNs. He hides his name. And this is his this is the kind of the, the payoff quote. Microchip says he has an ideal platform in Twitter in which to shape a message. Quote, Twitter is easier than other social networks and more volatile. He said emotions run mm -hmm. high at 140 characters. The chaos is perfect. That so, is true. So if you're I worried mean, about fake news, uh, fine. But it, but these these are perfect platforms for manipulation. Yeah. Microchip again, says, I can make whatever claims I want to make. This is how the game works. This yeah. is why I don't source my stories from Twitter. Right. Thank you. That's all I'm saying. Stop sourcing stories from Twitter. But bloggers and journalists are not going to do that. So uh, the the media That's not the, true. The, the, I I think I think the challenge is here here's one of the challenges. You have to decide like the original people reporting on this are media organizations with an agenda. One, two, when you're a reputable news organization, you assess like is this a tempest in a teapot or is this part of a deeper issue that's important to lots of people? And that's how that's how you should, I mean, you can't just say, I can't source anything on Twitter or I have to ignore Twitter. I think it's a good indicator of where the zeitgeist is, but then you have to do actual reporting around it. And I don't well, think that's a zeitgeist. Like, I mean, isn't Twitter a bubble? I mean, everybody always says, oh, you know, Silicon Valley is a bubble and, uh, you know, they're not real people. Twitter only has, what, how many active users a month? 300 million monthly active users? Max. And and half of those are bots, so... And the other half are journalists. <laughs> it doesn't... It reflects a, a limited zeitgeist. I mean, it's not, it's not how people in the real world are thinking, or is it? Uh, well, I mean, this is this is the problem. So, so there are journalists and there are people in the public who don't think, oh, there's this problem that people are sending out these bots. What they think is, oh, this is true. This is the truth, getting past the dishonest media, right? And and it's a democratizing platform, and right. enough of it circulates to to make it a phenomenon. So even if the mainstream media, it, it, some of these things are so viral that it's actually a dereliction to not cover the virality of the message that's going out there. I mean, the, the fact that lots of people are repeating and sharing this information itself is in fact legitimate news, which which as you see on the mainstream on on the cable news shows, just covering the fact that some something is a fake news story legitimizes the fake news story. That's just the nature of that medium. There was a great piece uh, circulating today uh, pointing out how uh, why comedians are so much better at covering fake news and false statements by politicians and others because they don't have this sense of fairness that media the media requires. The sense of fairness is being manipulated uh, by the fake news crowd uh, and the propagandists. And they almost can't help it. Whereas comedians can go right for the jugular and say, oh, this is ridiculous. I saw that, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, although that's partly also because comedians have no responsibility to be accurate or, or balanced or informed or have facts or any of that stuff. They just have right. to be funny. <laughs> it's a lot right. easier if that's the only requirement. Craig uh, Newmark, uh, uh, founder of Craigslist, has teamed up with Mozilla and Facebook to launch a $14 million fund to support, they say, news integrity. They don't want to use the fake news term. The News Integrity Initiative will be, uh, it was created with the goal of increasing trust in journalism worldwide and better informing the public conversation. Uh, they've already, I think they've already given a, a chunk of change. By the way, this is, uh, I should disclaim this, that Jeff Jarvis is involved in this. The CUNY Graduate School of Journalism is administering the project. And uh, Jeff is very intimately involved, and we're going to ask him about it uh, next week. He asked me, yeah. to his great credit, he emailed me when this was announced and said, uh, I'm really excited about this, but if you feel that this disqualifies me 
from Twig, I'll be glad to resign. I said, no, absolutely not. Um, his, his, I guess his concern is the, is the relationship with Facebook. But he says, of course, and I'll continue to be uh, skewer Facebook <laughs> as much as I want. Uh, it is being ca called the Facebook Journalism Project. Um, and who did yeah. they, they gave some money to, uh, so Arizona State's working on it, the Center for Community and Ethnic Media at CUNY, the Constructive Institute at Aarhus University in Denmark, Edelman, based in the Edelman, interesting, big PR firm. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of universities and schools. Weber Shandwick, another PR firm. I wonder why PR firms are interested in this. Um, hmm. it. Having a credible media that you can talk to is probably better for them so, than yeah. having. Yeah, good. I don't, I don't know. I like that. I hope that's true. Uh, Beta Works involved as well. The Democracy Fund, the Ford Foundation. And I'll be. You know what? We'll talk about it when Jeff gets back next week. And and I I would like to understand what they're going to try to do. I guess what they're doing is giving out some chunks of change to. Uh, people that are doing good work in and my my guess also is that they're going to try to figure out what is the problem really and how can it be best maybe, addressed yes. and then spread yes. best practices among journalists now one of the things that i think is interesting is that there's you know the fake news label has been thrown in the other direction by the president and others basically um confusing like what's fake news and people now disagree it's a point of disagreement about whether the mainstream media is fake news or real news and whether the... Well, I was always uncomfortable with that term fake news, and that's exactly why. Yeah, but... but it's but, in the eye of the beholder. It's, it's interesting to see who's driving initiatives like this and who isn't. So and I so, will say this, this debate over objective journalism, over perspectives and where you're coming from has been around at least as long as I've been in journalism, which is like 20 something years and probably as long as Leo's been in journalism, which is like a hundred years, which is, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> actually, yeah. actually said, it, I, okay. I, uh, I've quoted this before, but, but the first fake news appeared in the very first newspaper in 1832, uh, where there was a newspaper war in New York city and the uh, Herald, uh, published a story apparently that there was a very powerful microscope and we've discovered life on Mars and had a, series of articles about the martians in order to well, build circulation but th th that was the good kind of fake news that, you know <laughs> okay. um, no 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 <laughs> you just have to be accurate the challenge is no, our no, 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 world no. has gotten so complicated that even accurate news reporting can be fake news the the the, the, yeah, the okay the, i'll go let you finish and then I, i'll i'm going to try to be sincere and not cynical here but what's happening, <laughs> our world is so complicated. I can report a series of facts. And because those facts influence things like policy, people will interpret it different ways or right. find ways That's to right. take what I'm saying. That's right. And, It'll and, be interpreted as polemic instead of reporting. So this is... This is a challenge. It's a challenge that's only gotten worse with a president who has decided not to respect the historical, accurate news organizations of our time. Well, um, I would and, go farther with a president who's decided not to respect facts in any way. Okay, well, that's true. I but, mean, if what, th but this is really, it's not a trivial thing. No, it's... If, it's, if people, if, a, if, if the leadership lies to you so that blatantly, so much so that you start to doubt it's it's gaslighting. So much so that you start to doubt your own mental faculties. That is a huge problem. It's a much bigger problem than fake news. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I talked to my dad, who is a Trump supporter, actually for the first time in like since Trump was inaugurated and initiated his Muslim ban, um, and it was it was astonishing the different level of facts my dad is working with that is leading him to the conclusions that he's been making. Even which and, are the stories that matter? Yeah, it, it, it is. Be, I mean, we can, we can talk about stories and his, his frame of reference is completely different than mine. And I, of course, am like, am I crazy? Where, what? It's inadvertent is he gaslighting. Crazy? It is. It is. And, and it's why we can't, it's why we have this growing chasm yeah. in America yeah. because we aren't even talking about the same things anymore. Oh, right. His facts aren't your facts anymore. 
Right, and it's it's very frustrating because there's no way because both of us can agree on things not in the abstract, right? Like so, is the sky mutual, blue? Is the sun up? Is it the sun? Well, down? no, I was I was gonna you know an issue is a friend of mine who is Muslim and who is an American citizen. He no longer can travel because right. he gets stopped. Like for business, it is inefficient for him to leave the country shocking. right now. It's shocking, um, and it's. It's distressing. He is a CEO it's of a company. Distressing. And my dad can agree that that is distressing to him and feel bad that a guy he knows has that problem. But he can't take that and tie it to the greater policies because those facts are completely different. And it's, it is. I don't, it is. It's an inadvertent gaslighting. <laughs> no, and I try to well, put myself in the position, uh, uh, and, and I also have no uh, and friends and close to many uh, people who voted for uh, Trump and who uh, support him as president. And I understand that what they really like is uh, is the traditional conservative point of view of small government and less regulation and all that stuff. And they're kind of. I have to. I have to think at some point they're just kind of a little bit holding their nose and trying to ignore, you know, the 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 conflicts of interest the corruption the the weird tweeting and 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 just kind of saying well you know that's just we have to put up every president has got some you know skeletons in their closet you know bill clinton was no winner either but because they support you know my political leanings then i'm going to i'm going to support this guy cuz in the long run we're going to get what we want which is a smaller government and and less regulation and we're going to get a more conservative supreme court and that's going to be good and so the guy's a lunatic, but you know, but it, they never want to think that. I'm sure your dad doesn't think that there's something wrong with Donald Trump, but they're just kind of willing, well, willfully kind of saying, eh, just won't pay too much attention to that. A, a lot of Trump supporters know that he's a, a, a shameless uh, uh, con he's man, but they think, well, he's, he's our shameless con. Yeah, he's a salesman. So so one of the things that you, we talked about accidental um, uh, fake news, uh, I'm really concerned mostly with the with the real kind. Um, it was launched. Uh, th this concept was launched by the KGB years ago. It's called disinformatia. And the Russians have kind of yeah. perfected it. And the, yeah. the way this works is that you have multiple credible sounding versions of every single event. And a perfect example was when that Malaysia Airlines plane was shot down over the Ukraine uh, some time ago. And the the. Uh, the Russian news had five or six or ten different explanations for what caught John Podesta did it. Uh, you know, there were all <laughs> these different. Podesta did it, really? There, there are all these. Well, I didn't read them. I don't read Russian, but there, there were all these multiple plausible explinations. And so, you, depending on your political leanings and your political loyalties and who you I, were, I heard it was all that kind of Brazil, pick, but okay, go ahead. It was Donna, and 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 so you, you pick the one that you like the best, and that's and there's no truth. And every time anybody tries to say, well, no, the Russians shot it down; they trucked in the thing. No, 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 that's what they want you to believe. Well, but actually, the, the look at people who think that 9/11 uh, uh, was an inside job. Yeah. Or uh, you know, I feel so bad for the 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 parents and families in Sandy Hook, who just this other this just yesterday said, yeah. can can please can you stop spreading the news, the fake conspiracy theory that this was a false flag government operation. Our children died. This was not a false flag. And it makes me so sad, but this, but go to YouTube. You can read, there's, someone's just saying there's videos, there's hours of videos about how the earth is flat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Demonstrably so false, but, they, but people believe it. Yeah. I guess it's human. And, I don't know. I guess it's human. Well, oh, there, it, what, there are actually some really good books about this right now. I will come with a reading list next time because I can't remember the names of them right good, now. Good. Well, the, the the big picture is that this is the great challenge of our generation of journalism. We have to figure out how to communicate uh, the truth and also take into account alternative perspectives and and find the difference there between alternative perspectives. There are things that are debatable. Does, is God yes. exist? That's debatable. We can have a debate. Yes. We have a conversation. Uh, right. you, but and then there are things that are not debatable. The earth is not flat. That's not really uh, up for conversation. You know, that's demonstrably, <laughs> in factually incorrect. I have, I'm, I, I'm a, a partisan for not only newspapers, but also print newspapers. And I've been subscribing to the New York Times and other publications for many, many years. And I think that we had the solution and we are eager to flush that solution down the toilet. Uh, when you subscribe to several newspapers and news magazines that are of high quality and that run the 
the, the political spectrum. Subscribe to Reason and, and the National Review, but also the New Yorker and the Atlantic Monthly and the New York Times and maybe the Post or whatever it is. A, 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 you know, choose credible publications and then read them from front to back. You are you're getting great perspective. You're getting the the legitimate. Uh, and, and we're so eager to get rid of that and get our news on Facebook, which is a terrible idea. Well, by I mean, people think that, you know, Infowars is a legitimate publication. I know, I know. And the people who believe that including sincerely believe that. Including our president. So, it, I, I mean, it's, it's one Homeland? thing. <laughs> Do they yeah. talk about uh, Alex Jones on Homeland? They have an Alex Jones type person who's wow. in cahoots with a with a shady operative. I won't give too many spoilers, but but it's Alex Jones on crack. I mean, it's like so scary what they're depicting wow. in that show, and it's kind of sort of what's ho happening in the world this globally. Is, has this always been? This is always. I mean, this must always have been part of the uh, of the of hu the human experience, right? There's always been. But so we didn't have probably, viral news. We didn't have, we, we didn't have and we didn't have a president it. who. Who believed in it? I don't know if that's true. I mean, who, we don't know. It. Maybe Andrew Jackson really believed uh, Indian <laughs> the red red Indians were to Satan's uh, spawn. I mean, oh, we, I believe that Andrew Jackson actually probably thought that he did. He killed. <laughs> he killed. He created the Trail of Tears. I mean, uh, and by the way, the hero. You know, his portrait hangs in the Oval Office. Um, but but I'm just saying that we just didn't know because we didn't yeah. have all this electronic media. Yeah, right? we know too much. We know too much. I, so many, know too so much. often, and I'm I'm the worst person for this because I I read I read a thousand stories a day. I mean I, I'm like I, I'm so into information overload and reading all this stuff. And sometimes I'm reading a story and I'm like, you know, a, 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 some kid lost his puppy and whatever. I would never be reading about this. <laughs> I know. This is, you know why is this it's of general all the interest? Time. It's called yeah. That's called using Facebook, Mike. Why yeah, would I yes, be reading that's this? That's what it is. <laughs> right. <laughs> I would never and then see you go to this. the next. And then, and then it passes, and you go to yeah. the next thing. I, I <laughs> for a while, one brief shining utopian moment, I thought that we were going to live in a society where facts had become commoditized because they were so readily available, and everybody could agree on them. And this would yeah. make for a marvelous uh, future where we didn't have to worry about fact gathering. I remember, I remember my father-in-law when he first saw an iPad. And he was looking, like he was one of the science apps. And he was saying, man, if, if Copernicus had had this, he would have had all the data he needed to come to to figure out that the uh, Earth revolved the sun. He wouldn't have had to grind all that glass and spend his entire lifetime making telescopes. And, um, and so we were going to live in this era where all of this information was available. And then now the, now the highest aspiration, the, the, where humans could start to really excel, is start to being data synthesis machines. And we'd come up with brilliant new insights and, and instead we just can't agree on the facts anymore well, well you know we, but, can, but the, we can when it comes to technology i mean like look at the toaster challenge where you try to get people to build a toaster i mean I know, we're that's doing hysterical isn't it <laughs> we're making really awesome things that, you know why that is you know videos. why that is because in technology and this is why i love engineers it either works or it doesn't work right yeah. it's either, it's very black and white so you don't ever have to say well i think i can fly because you either can or you can't. And if you don't have the technology, it, you'll never fly. So it, it also has to be said that today's Copernicuses are not uh, spending all their time on Facebook getting fake news. The, the, <laughs> the, the, that, that glorious world where all the facts are available to the Copernicuses of the world exists. And, and they're out there taking advantage of it. It's a wonderful world. And it's true. also a sewer. Yeah, I hope that's true. And I hope that it maybe it maybe that's kind of what I was saying in the beginning, which is maybe if we all spend a little less time paying attention to what Twitter, uh, Twitter outrage, you know, uh, storms and uh, and Facebook uh, happy dog pictures, maybe maybe we could start actually making some progress. Yeah, because it's outrageous. <laughs> hey, maybe we want to talk about like I want to talk about know. something good. Google TV. How about that? App Okay, yeah. I was gonna TV. say Google Home has some cool stuff. Yeah, let's, Google let's, TV works yeah. too. No more, no more, uh, no more uh, big. This show is really an interesting mix of big subjects like that, and then, hey, you want to see the new phone? <laughs> 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 this thing's cool. So that's what's fun about this show. You never know what you're gonna get. Stacy Higginbotham is here from Stacy on IoT. She's at the IoTpodcast.com. Great show she does with Kevin Tofel. Writes about IoT and uh, is is a brilliant and uh, inspiring journalists. And we're thrilled to have her on the show. I would say exactly the same about my good friend, Mike Elgin. 
who has found a lifestyle that we all envy. Yep. Damn you. Gastro Travel the nomad. world. Yep. And eat everything. Oh, man. Gastronomad.net. And uh, you'll see his right. In fact, he, you wrote a, a, a piece uh, on why YouTube TV matters, which we will talk about. They yep. just launched it. And uh, I signed up immediately. So we'll, yeah. talk, we'll talk about uh, shiny things <laughs> in just a moment. <laughs> happy things. Happy, shiny people. Uh, no, shiny, happy people. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I got the facts wrong. Waze is going to be an Android Auto. Nice. Who's got Android Auto? Nobody. Okay, uh, just check it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we have our own... We're in our own little world. Did you see that Elon, both uh, Stacy and I drive Teslas? Did you see that Elon has started a new company to facilitate the brain, the bio chip? I thought that interface? was an April Fool's joke. Is it? That wasn't Neura, Neuralink or? Is oh, it is that? Oh, did I get fooled? Man, Hold I, on. I, I thought freaking I freaking hate. I freaking no, hate. I, is no, April is Fools. that? Uh, uh, okay, no, no, it, it might it, be real. If it's a fake, then he spent a lot of energy on building the website. I can't no, wait for the real. mental <laughs> autopilot. <laughs> no, this is what we wanted. This is what's in sci-fi. I want to jack in. Forget the visor and the hollow lens right, and the right. Google yeah, Glass you're, and the ear pods. If just, you're worried about government <laughs> surveillance because we have cameras and microphones, I don't care. It'll be head. worth it. They can read my mind. I don't care. I just want like, the metaverse, please. Like that guy in the like that guy in the matrix. Matrix. I don't want to remember nothing. Yeah. Plug me into the power plant. Where's I that, don't want to remember where's nothing. Where's that blue pill? Give me the blue pill. Our show today brought to you by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Great mortgage lender, the best in the country. Just look at all those JD Power customer satisfaction awards year after year after year, and they put together a product for you if you're buying a house or refining, and you want to do it all online. This is amazing. Now, I know some people want to meet your mortgage lender. I don't know why. You want to go through. You love the nostalgia of going through your old bank statements and pay stubs and finding all the paperwork. Oh, remember that week? That was a great week. We really got paid that week. Uh, be my guest. But if you would love to do this all online, submit all the paperwork with a touch of a finger and get it done in minutes instead of days, weeks, months. It took us a month the last time we bought a house. A month to get approved for the loan. And we and they kept coming back to us again and again saying, okay, do you have this? Do you have that? Oh, I wish Rocket Mortgage had been around then. Believe me, from now on, Rocket Mortgage, go to quickenloans.com slash twig. Do it all online, friction-free. It only takes minutes to get approved for a mortgage that's just right for you. You, you can even adjust the rate and length of your loan in real time. Quickenloans.com slash twig for Rocket Mortgage Equal Housing Lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLS Consumer Access org number 3030. Skip the bank. Skip the waiting. Go completely online. Quickenloans.com slash twig. I'm going to have a little bit of uh, some delicious Pepsi-Cola right now uh, while uh, uh, Mike Elgin tells us about YouTube TV. I wish I were getting paid for this. They would make you slurp it more quietly. <laughs> a little more slurp delicious. More Mike, I think you muted your uh, you muted your mic there. Uh, there it is. Yeah, thank Ooh. you. Um, yeah, so uh, YouTube TV. YouTube TV is uh, was announced about a month ago. Nobody knew when it was going to launch or where, uh, and it has launched today in five American cities. I think that everybody in the nation in the U.S. can sign up, but you only get local programming from the area of one of those cities. So New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Bay Area, Chicago, and Philadelphia. AMC exactly. is going to be on the network. It's kind of right now, it's kind of the sports and locals network with a little news thrown in. It's got all the news networks as well. Yes, but but I but I'm I'm I believe that this is really, really, really bad news for the cable TV industry and a really, really big deal, much bigger than people realize. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. Now, just a, a quick uh, roundup of what it is. It's 40 channels uh, for the basic uh, 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 35 bucks. package, 35 bucks. And that's five accounts, each of which has unlimited DVR. You Ooh. can watch three of them simultaneously. You can watch it on a phone, on a tablet, on a TV uh, with Chromecast, uh, et cetera. It has ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, the CW, ESPN, USA, Bravo, et cetera, et cetera, Disney Channel, on and on. It does not, it does have, not have HGTV. CNN. No, it does not have but it CNN. has Oprah. What else you need? <laughs> it, it does not have HBO, AMC, <laughs> like, MTV, It has Bravo. It has. 
Yeah, you, at least you get Desperate Housewives. Come yeah. on. Oh, there yeah. you go. And some cooking shows. But it also HGTV has, is super hot. It also has a, a DVR functionality. Unlimited storage for the DVR. And me, this each is how easy of the accounts can have its own DVR. So oh, each wow. of your kids can have their own unlimited DVR. So let's say great. I am an Archer fan, which I am, and I want to record Archer. Uh, I could just click it to, boom, I press the plus button. It will now record every Archer episode, and I will have that available to me to watch Time Shifted. Oh, this is for you, Stacy. Total Divas. You what like that? Divas? Let's add, I don't know, but I think you're going to want to watch it. Add Total Divas to my DVR. The NCAA Championships, Modern Fan. So this, and it's got live locals, right? This Does is it amazing. have live, live locals for sports? Like, yes. Because yes. on MLB Live, you know, your baseball games are so, blocked out if you're. Here's oh, the, here's it might. The I don't know. I, you know, that's a good question. If Because that is a little bit of a problem. That's annoying. Sometimes they <laughs> promise that they've got, you know, Major League Baseball, but then in, in, you, you get blacked out. Well, they, this is, they're probably going to be some of that, but probably less than on other services. It It's, the sports coverage is really this pretty is good. Sports, it's sports ESPN, package. ESPN2, yeah. ESPN NU, the Big Ten Networks, SEC Network. There's much better college coverage and, and Fox coverage. Fox Sports of, 1 and 2 and NBC Sports. sports. Here yeah. in the Bay Area, we've got the Bay Area Network, so we can watch Giants Baseball, Warriors Basketball, CBS Sports Network. It's even got golf. It's got a, uh, you know, the, the, the kids stuff, Sprouts, Disney. Um, it's Phineas got and Ferb. Phineas and Ferb, baby. So That's such the, a thing that, show. the thing that I, I think that, um, that movies and TV shows are, are becoming more and more available on multiple places, uh, you, you name it, Hulu, et cetera. Um, but what's becoming more rare and valuable is event television, including sports. So the Oscars, the Olympics, the, the uh, That's the, the missing Bowl. piece from any cord cutter. That's the you missing piece. You can get piece. Netflix, this you can get HBO. This provides that. Yeah. This provides and by the almost way, all of it. I, you know, and I can you can compare this to PlayStation View, uh, AT and T's Direct TV. There's three or four of these services now, but this is Google. The UI is spectacular. So here I am. This is this is my this is my cable guide. These are the live channels I can see. And you said Phineas and Ferb, so I hover over it, and now I'm watching it. It's actually playing as a preview. I get a great. It says 17 minutes left. I get a great description of it. I can see if I want to watch it. I see what's next. I can DVR it from here. I can go full screen. This is this is this is how, you know, when when Steve Jobs said, "I've licked TV," it's you know, this is what I would have imagined Apple would have done. And Apple, this has, is what he would have licked. This is and, Apple um, has not been able to put this together. You know, the the thing that's powerful about this is that people under the age of 30 are obsessed with YouTube. But as they yeah. as they get older and start families and yeah. go to college and all that kind of stuff, they're going to want to watch more mainstream TV, but they love YouTube already. And so they're going to start watching their live TV and their cable TV on YouTube. This is very devastating to the cable providers. I think one of the things it's going to do is finally turn phones into a legitimate and oh, widespread medium for live TV. Because this will so work on not, my mobile device. Might even sell some iPads, right? It might. Uh, it'll work on uh, all these mobile devices. The other thing that's really devastating to cable, and I think it's really underappreciated and underreported uh, by all those fake news people, is uh, is the fact that their advertising uh, abilities are through the roof. The advertising uh, industry has been champing at the bit for years to get for 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 Google and YouTube to to launch exactly this because their data on the users is amazing. And they'll be able to very tightly target uh, advertising and YouTube would be able to charge a fortune for advertising because it'd be so um, so tightly and, and, and accurately targeted at the demographics of the, of the viewers. They don't, the premium channel's a little bit lacking. They have Showtime, they do not have HBO. You'd have to buy HBO now. I mean, at 35 bucks, this is the least expensive offering. This beats PlayStation's oh. lowest offering at 39. Yeah. What? So for NFL fans, um, blackout. you'll fall under blackouts yeah. on mobiles because Verizon has this. Right. I'm still trying to figure out the blackout situation. It Well, good luck because it's, it's yeah. terrible. So look at this, though. Here's Sports On Now, and I'm actually getting live mini feeds of the Giants game, the, uh, the uh, uh, athletics game, the NCAA championships. Here's ESPN, soccer. And Total Divas is apparently a sports show. I don't, I don't know if that's the case, but it's in there, right? And these are all. I'm not sure. I'd like that show. Yeah, these uh, I are think all that's what they call soccer. Yeah, Total Divas. Oh, that's right. 
It's the, <laughs> the drop and flop. Um, this is this is the UI that you you're, you, hit, you nailed it. By the way, uh, that, oh my that, God, Total Divas is a sports show. I oh, had to look it up. Sorry, okay. it is a docu series following the top female WWE superstars. Oh, but it's wrestling, so it's kind of got a little yeah. bit of both. <laughs> yeah, this it's like reality TV on reality TV. Yeah, um, this is this would not interest me. The title but, of this episode, season six, episode seven, a win wine situation. So. You be the judge. Now, I have to say, for the YouTube generation, YouTube's mixed right in, including the YouTube originals, right? Shows on yep. YouTube, YouTube videos. Uh, this, I could see my son, my 22-year-old son, who does not watch TV, he watches YouTube. This is what he, can, this is what he wants. And the, yeah. the, beauty is, the beauty of it is that that family plan, the kids are going to be nagging the parents to get the family wow. plan. The $35 a month covers five people. So all each of the kids gets their own separate like account, or their own DVR. This is, this is big news. This is going to be really popular, I think. Now, what is the – so here's the big issue I see is this is a, a lean forward experience on mobile and even on computer. What is the lean back experience? Do I watch it on Chromecast, Android TV? I guess Android yes. TV, right? Yes, and and Chromecast and Google said that they uh, they're going to be making announcements this year of additional TVs. So I have, have a Shield at home. In. This would this will probably be now on my Shield because I have YouTube on there. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. But I do think wow. I, th I do think that the subtle play here is a behavioral one, and I do think it's going to turn live TV and event TV into a lean back experience. Getting the live locals is a big deal. Now I'm in the San Francisco area of dominant influence but we are 50 miles north of san francisco we can't over the air get any san francisco stations so you know here up in here in petaluma but i am yeah. getting the locals i'm in the san francisco bay area so that's really interesting that's awesome this yeah. this could replace cable for me this is this is fantastic the bay area coverage seems to be much broader than the other yeah, metro yeah they call it bay area uh, yeah 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 Wow, this is uh, just in the nick of time for <laughs> baseball season to start. Yeah, yeah. You don't have MLB Live? Not I mean, anymore. It's expensive. <laughs> Not anymore. Right. It's one hundred forty nine dollars for the season. This is thirty five dollars wow. a month. I guess it's the same, but it, I was but I get a lot of other stuff. <laughs> It sounds Given cheaper, though, doesn't it? Given how baseball season is. <laughs> sounds, sounds does sound cheaper, though. They should have a weekly rate. That would be really cheap. Um, wow. I And I have to say, this is, I've played, I played with, for iOS Today, we did a review. I did a review of the all of the streaming packages, PlayStation View, which I think is the, was until now the best, at and Direct TV, which did not work very well. And a lot of people continue to complain that it's not working very well, that it's not playing, that there are bugs. Uh, who else? Uh, who, uh, uh, Slingbox, Sling TV. Um, what was? It? What are some of the other? I think that's the big three right there: Sling TV, View, and uh, ATT. This one beats them up, down, and sideways. It's yeah, it's TV, in every yeah. respect. Plus, it's cheaper. Yeah. Here's another uh, a subtle benefit: you can pause it. So if you're going to be out of the country for a month or two, you can not pay uh, during those months. And if you don't, if nobody. In, on your family account logs in for three months, they automatically pause it. And what? Stop charging. That's nice. That yeah. is very anti-cable company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is where competition really, we really benefit from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so here's some movies. Let's say I did want to see The Matrix. They know their geek audience. I click on it. It's going to be on sci-fi. I just press the plus button and now it's DVR'd. That's it. It's simple as that. Wow. Uh, wow is right. Can I now? I'd be interested if I'll be able to skip commercials. Then they yeah, also that was have not known. That, yeah, related on YouTube, and here's all the YouTube content. So this is a great cross promotion for YouTube. And then there's more information about the cast. This is this is uh, exactly what the online consuming TV audience is now kind of expecting, right? Now, Leo, Unless it imagine, has a lot of advertising. If, right, but it doesn't Imagine if do. they bought Twitter and integrated Twitter into that oh. experience. How great that would be. Oh, that's what's missing from this is a kind of real-time interactivity Social. and outrage. <laughs> <laughs> how dare they put Lauren Big Lake's... How dare they put Lauren Lake's paternity court on at 4.30? Oh, time doesn't matter. <laughs> Not anymore. I still, re I still remember my daughter... Um, saying to me, probably like when she was like six or seven, she's like, I really, I feel, cause we've been cord cutters forever. 
I feel really sorry for my friends who have to watch television shows when they're on. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? Also, wow. So you get a first month's free. So I'm on the free uh, trial. By the way, most of these other services, in fact, all the other services have one week free trial. So in every respect, YouTube has clearly paid attention to what's going on out there. Apple yep. really wanted to launch this, by the way. Uh, but even if Apple does launch exactly the same service, it'll be limited to Apple TV. They don't have YouTube. And they don't oh, have wait. YouTube. I could do this instead of Hulu. Sorry, my brain just clicked on, although it's kind of more expensive compared because I use Hulu as my network TV, but I get so irritated because they, you know, they, they window things that if you but don't But I don't know. It, See, it's not in Austin yet. So oh. New York, LA, San Francisco, Chicago, and Philadelphia. We don't get that or Google Fiber. They're going to have AMC, which is, that's the that's the Walking Dead crowd. But again, Stacey, I'm pretty sure you can just get the Chicago one. Really? Is, that, is that the stuff. case? I'm pretty sure. You don't have yeah. to be in that area? Why don't you try that right, right now, Stacey? TV.YouTube.com. Uh, TV.YouTube.com. Uh, and... Hulu is working on its own. This is, these are called skinny bundles. <laughs> Terrible name. Uh, <laughs> Try one month free. Oh, my God. But I've got to pick one of my eight Google accounts. <laughs> I guess my personal one. <sighs> it's one month free. Uh, just remember to cancel it in a month. That's what I did is I set reminders to cancel all of those other services because I did not want to have Oh, wait. Those. Hold on. Now I've picked my account. It's asking me about my location. Okay. Uh, they guessed my location wrong, but it is not available in my area. Yeah. <laughs> so they're not let you, letting you do it. So what if you, you have tell to be them in those metros? Chicago. Uh, give me a zip code for Chicago. Uh, uh, what is the Spiegel catalog, right? 60601. 60601. <laughs> I'm not even. Spiegel I'm catalog, not even Chicago, gonna Illinois, 60601. <laughs> Oh, Chicago area. YouTube TV is available in my area, but unfortunately, you're going to have to wait until you're home to sign up. <laughs> but, but, so, but, so what if you I use fool you, Google. VPN? <laughs> yes, I could. VPN, I could but that's VPN. not, you know, that's not going to be satisfactory. The question really is how soon do they roll this out nationwide? And yeah. will they? And I suspect that they have to make these negotiations with the locals for in each market, right? right? Or no? You can't go to CBS and say, hey, can we run... KPIX, our local CBS station. Uh, let's see what the quality is. It's starting off not great. And remember, we have a... Oh, but I can... The Auto 360. I can go up to 480p. I don't see HD. That might be another issue. So Judge Judy doesn't look as good as she oughta. Is that Judge Judy? That's no, not Judge Judy. No, I don't know who it is. You're asking the wrong Judge guy. Judge Judy's that, she's got, she's older and has shorter hair. Who is that? That's Did the people's court. This is the Wapner replacement. Time for uh, Wapner. Judge yeah, Judy's coming up. Three dogs and a cat. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's Judge Judy. I was like, that's Judge Judy. <laughs> I got fooled. What are you thinking? Uh, closed captioning? When you're already in under, you know, you're, you're over your head in just... Audio track primary, I guess Who's I can do... Let's see if how it sounds in Spanish. Okay. So then he uh, subtitles. He called me, he said he was unhappy, um, he wanted to come back. Oh, watch. This is the way to watch it. I can watch it at double speed. <laughs> oh my God, that would be awesome for all those reality TV shows that we re replay everything a million times. I wish they would make the voices twice as high. Um, and then his behavior just became erratic. Yeah. Um, he was eyes closed. He would sit up, start talking, you know, like rambling. At one point, he took a pack of frozen meat. That's... <laughs> why, are you, why are you acting like this? Why are you and acting like this? Me. Why are you doing this to me? Uh, that's really interesting. YouTube TV. Wow. I think this might be a kill. And I have to say, I've seen Google do some stupid things, but this is a killer product. Yep. Yep. Uh, by the way, you can get a Chromecast if you sign up, right? The seventy dollar one or the thirty five dollar oh, non? I don't know. I mean, they're giving those those thirty five dollar ones. Away. Yeah. Very. Hey, you know what else they're giving away? What? A Google Home if you buy an LG. Is it six? Really? Yeah. Yep. Let's, B6, go, let's go. B six. The, the LG. Those are the. Uh, I have. That's what I have is a B six. But they also make a. Uh, I think a G six. These are the four uh, K LG TVs. They're really nice. By the way, can I say? completely off the subject but if you do get a 4k uhd tv and you get a 4k uhd blu-ray player you need both 
you must get BBC's Planet Earth series, the new one. They reshot the whole thing in 4K. You're all invited to my house. You have it's it's incredible. Thank God I, I don't I never have to leave the house again. I don't care about the visa situation. I could just stay in my house. <laughs> It's, no, you it's, have to come to the studio. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh, yeah, I come here. That's okay. So far, there's no border patrol between here and my house. Uh, they're Dig not going to get that extreme vetting thing through, are they? Wait, okay. Hey, let's talk about something that's not political. Okay, thank you. You're you're going to depress me. I can't handle this. Yeah, I know. I understand. I understand. Uh, but really, I don't think we'll have... I would never come visit the U.S. if I had to give them my social media passwords. Your well, social I'm, I'm, media password, you have to give them your Facebook and Twitter password if you're visiting, if you're a Frenchman visiting, now they're not, This there's no way this gets through, but this is what the White House is proposing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Stacey. But if you're a why Frenchman. Why do you think it won't get through? Because it's insane. No one will ever yeah. visit the U.S. again. They, they, All, they, every academic the, conference will have to be canceled. It's called the Trump slump. They, they're, they're looking, facing billions of dollars in lost revenue in the hospitality industry because people are canceling their vacations to the well, U.S. Well, imagine already. now if you were coming, and it doesn't have to, it's not from Muslim countries. If you were coming from France, uh, an ally nation, the U.K., in the United States, the Border Patrol can say, give me your social media passwords. Mm -hmm. I want to see your contacts list to see who you talk to. And by the way, Tell me about your politics. Do you like President Trump? And if for any reason at all, at any point, you say no, bye-bye, you're going home. And other, com other countries will copy and retaliate. That's the worst so thing. I'm worried about traveling. Constantly. Exactly. So, that again, the, the, the best that's defense the is disinformation. Thing, Have a second Twitter account, a second Facebook account that's really I don't know. Don't lie uh, to these sanitized. guys. Then they could throw you in jail. I think we're – oh, my God. Anyway, don't get me started. You're right, Stacey. Sorry about well, that. I'm also concerned because I'm going to be flying to Morocco. Morocco is one of the countries on the list Morocco. where you can't, you on certain airlines out of Morocco, you can't have a laptop. So I'm going to check my MacBook Morocco's Pro. on that list? Yeah. Wow. Certain but not airlines. if you fly American Airlines. If you fly United, Delta, right. American. Right. right. Go ahead. Because you're you're a good person. So but, but again, you can have a laptop. But again, it's. I think this these 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 things are they spread uh, globally to other countries, oh, no, other of airlines. They do. Yeah, and so I just don't like the whole trend of passwords and no laptops and the. It's all bad. Okay, we'll talk about this after the show, Stacy. <laughs> seriously, because I have a theory about the whole thing that is very depressing. Stacy, your turn. <laughs> No, 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 no. You guys can keep. I, I'm just gonna go and and cry into my beer. Um, I'm just gonna I, go I, watch I, TV with Leo. I have so a speaking, great TV. Come to my house. We can learn about the world by watching TV. That's what they do in North Korea. Speaking of TV, because Google added, well, they added a bunch of partners last week to Google Home. Yay, including Wink, August, LG. Not LG. I'm sorry. Best Buy Insignia brand stuff. Um, there's another big one that I was excited about. Oh, TP-Link. Uh, but they also added Logitech, which means, Leo, your Logitech Harmony Home Hub. <gasps> now you can integrate it with your Google Home. I so, gave my Google Home to my daughter. I need it back. Abby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? But this is, I, I just want to point out. Abby doesn't have a stereo system, but the speaker's pretty good on the Google uh, Home. And I said, you know, you can ask for music because it's on my account, so you can play anything on my Google Play Music. You can listen to podcasts. You can listen to news. It's her stereo system. She loves it. Yeah. It's yeah, a really no, my, great device for that. So I'm actually trading. So we're we're moving the Echo, which sits in my living room, kitchen, op I have open kitchen, dining, living, just massive space downstairs. Um, that's where our Echo lives. We're switching it out with the Google Home now that the Google Home has all these integrations and we're moving the Echo upstairs to my daughter's room because, and she is freaking thrilled because all she does is tell it to play, you know, the Pokemon theme song. Oh, and Pentatonix. Over and over and over and over again. In her so room, thank God. Her. Yes, but now it'll be in her room, so we're all very excited about that. Uh, and so, yes, Logitech Harmony Home, a little bit different, though. So something to note, most things you ask for Google, you just go to the Google Home app, and then you add the device from there. For 
the Logitech integration, you actually have to tell it to, you you actually tell the Google Home, okay, G, open Logitech, I'm trying to remember the exact words. It's like open Logitech Harmony or connect, connect Harmony Hub. And then it's going to throw up a card on your phone app and then you connect through that. So it's a little weird. I had a really hard time because my phone kept saying, I can't help you with that because it was talking instead of to the hub, it was talking to the home or the Google assistant. So I finally put my phone in another room and then talked to the Google home and that worked. <laughs> so <Good>. can <laughs> I get the pentatonics my... singing the Pokemon theme on my Google, my home hub? You know, I don't know if they do the Pokemon okay. theme. They okay. certainly do a wide variety of other things. <laughs> Inquiring wines want to know. <laughs> oh, Oh, hey guys, look who's coming in. Come on in, let's hear the who, Pokemon theme. Who literally just busted into the doorway. This is like the oh, BBC just, guy. Yeah, he's trying to, she's trying to pull a BBC thing. Oh no, it's a dog. Oh, but it's a cute <laughs> dog. Oh, we don't blame you. Now, if your husband comes and drags him out by the tail while crouching <laughs> below, ostensibly below the camera line, then you've got a viral video. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. My dog is not, but she did. The door was shut. How did she open it? She has learned how to use the knob. That, Be that afraid. Be very afraid. All right. Oh. oh, now you got to meet my dog too. What's her name? Sophie. Sophie's adorable. She's part corgi? I think so. Yeah. There's a look, little corgi in there. Oh, she's adorable. She, oh, she, oh, oh, look. Oh my God. She does tricks. Now she wants a treat. Yes, I'm sorry. I have nothing. I have nothing for you. <laughs> Just give her one of your toes. She'll like that. Oh. Uh, gosh, that got dark too. Is there something wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> I brought you a dog that totally livened things up, and you're I think like, "There's something wrong with me." Even a puppy couldn't help. <laughs> Actually, I will be able to watch the NFL on not Twitter this year, but Amazon. Yeah. And Amazon got the deal by spending 10 times more than Twitter spent. Yeah. Five games, 50 million schmeckers. That's kind of amazing. And did a coup. It, and, I'm sorry, 10 games, 5 million again. And it's free to Amazon Prime members. And so, oh. you know, it, it's, it's, it's yet another case where anytime you try to do anything with Amazon, it's yep. always like, Wow, it really makes a lot of sense to have an Amazon Prime. What did account. you gain? What did Twitter gain by streaming on Twitter? Nothing. Well, yeah. will Amazon game, uh, you know, a thousand, hundred thousand Prime subscribers, right. maybe? I don't know. They'll, they'll get new customers who will, in their lifetime, spend a million dollars on Amazon.com. I know this pays for itself. There used to be there used to be a service that you could link your Amazon account to that would tell you how much you've spent on Amazon over time. Oh, I, I, don't I, 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 I can do that. I can I, text. I have a, uh, actually, it should be my pick this week. It's a, it's a text financial messaging service that uh, sends you texts every once in a while. And then if you want, you can say, you know, tell me how much I spent on Amazon or, or, or any other, uh, you know, as long as it's all, all the accounts are tied in. <laughs> See, Leo, you can I have put one your... or two of those and I don't remember what they are either. But I, And so I can't cancel them because I'm like, which one is this? And I don't care that much. So <laughs> I don't really like, want to know. Uh, mine's called, um, well, it told me, uh, so, okay. But it doesn't, it doesn't say its name. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I, I can do trim. it trim. Yeah. It's my... called Trim. Trim. That's the one I have, yeah. So okay. it just said, uh, so it sent me a text a couple of days ago. Was this month spending Angel or Monkey with his hands over his ears? Because they use clever emoticons. Reply, spend Amazon to see how much you've spent there. So I had to spend Amazon. You spent $3,586 on Amazon this month. Wow. <laughs> what the hell? You I win. think that includes no, but that no, but that includes uh, it's you too, John. It so includes John the whole ch the whole network. This is like we buy stuff. No, <laughs> no, it does because it, it's got it's got our business cards are also tied into this. Leo, Leo, tell us about your TV again. How amazing is that? <laughs> you got it on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, but you, was, you can also say spend McDonald's. Let me let me see how much I spent at McDonald's this this month. Zero. Please tell it be zero. <laughs> oh, it's definitely zero. 
Did you have you seen the uh, the movie about uh, called Founder about Ray Kroc? Oh, such a great movie! Oh, I actually wanted to see that. It's fascinating. I, not, I don't know if it's a great movie, but it is very interesting. He was kind it, of a jerk. He was a well, jerk, yeah. but it's it's fascinating from the perspective of thinking about Silicon Valley and startups, and how on almost all the biggest properties, the thing they thought that was not valuable turns out right. to be the most valuable thing. Right. And in the case of McDonald's, it was real estate, and they did a great job depicting that. That was well done. Uh, B.J. Yep. Novak, uh, formerly of The Office, turns out, who knew, to be a business genius. And he's <laughs> at the bank, and he overhears Ray Kroc saying, please don't take my house. <laughs> and he says, you're doing it all wrong. Because I guess the original deal, so it's fascinating how he basically screwed the McDonald's brothers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And But then, he's, <laughs> Kroc is such a doofus, he screws him and gets nothing. <laughs> he gets one and a half percent of revenue, and it's like he's, lo he's like losing his shirt. And so this guy comes over, ends up being the CEO of McDonald's and says, you know, you got it all wrong. This is a real estate play and explains it and they do it. And now it's the big, you know, it's a huge company. Yeah. But in the long run, what, uh, what, uh, and by, uh, by the way, uh, Ray Kroc is very nicely played, I thought, by Batman. I want to say uh, Tom Hanks. Val Kilmer? No, no, <laughs> no. The guy was in Beetlejuice. Yeah. The guy was in the, the, drum, the thing, you know, <laughs> what? Yeah. Michael Keaton. He's oh, played, Michael Keaton. He's played by Beetlejuice. Okay. Is Bat better. That's Batman. Yes. Yeah, that, Beetlejuice well, a or Batman. Batman. Batman doesn't narrow it down much. Beetlejuice narrows yeah. it down a lot. Uh, Michael Keaton. Um, at at the end, I don't. This isn't. You can even have a spoiler. No, everybody knows what happened. At the end, he says, "You guys thought that the your the key to McDonald's was you know the 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 layout, the speedy." Service. I thought all it was this. the bathrooms. The bathrooms. Like people traveling interstate yeah. highways wanted to go he into. Says, yeah. You guys never knew all this time. You never knew what was really valuable at McDonald's. It's the name. Yeah. And, Ray, and Ray Kroc really did say this. They show video of him at the end. Uh, the real Ray Kroc saying this. The name McDonald's. It's America. He said, "I don't like those gimmicky names. Burger this or Jack and the that. Yeah. McDonald's. It's America." He tells the he McDonald's brothers, "You cannot use the name McDonald's anymore. <laughs> he won't let them use their own name." Oh, it's good, and genius. and uh, and uh, Nick Offerman plays the, one of the McDonald's brothers brilliantly. The smart one, the smart oh. one, so good. Yeah, he was good. He was really good. Uh, that cheered me you up. Know, okay. <laughs> well, you didn't spend any money at McDonald's this month, so <laughs> I didn't. That's it, good. It was actually zero. That also cheers me up. It says we couldn't yeah. find any McDonald's transactions since the beginning of the month. Try spend Lyft. <laughs> I also spent nothing on Lyft. But see, that's oh, a nice service. Say, that's trim, it's called. Yeah. Okay. I like it because uh, it's all text-based. So, yeah, you, you can also just tell it all accounts and it just tell you the balance of all your accounts in one text. The way they get you is, and actually this really worked with me, is they say, you've got, you've got a mo monthly subscriptions to a bunch of stuff. Find out how much it's losing and help, and we'll help you cancel it. So you can say, my subscriptions... And then it gives you all your subscriptions. And then they say cancel Audible, which I'm not real happy about. Got it. We'll cancel. And then they'll cancel it for you. So that's what got me because I have a lot of monthly subscriptions that I've lost track of. Yeah. We all yeah. do. I'm oh, sure. yeah. Well, my my husband keeps a close eye on all of our monthly subscriptions. Good man. That's good. Somebody's got to. Yeah. No. It's, I mean, because we have like probably 30 or 40 monthly subscriptions. There are so many Ridiculous. businesses that rely entirely on people forgetting that the money is flowing in their direction. Yes. Mm -hmm. You think about gift cards, you know, people yes. get a gift card, you get one as a gift, you forget about it, it loses it, gets ends up in the trash or whatever. They still get, keep they keep the money. You know? It's yep. terrible. Let's see. Oh, I have quite a few uh subscriptions. Oh boy. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. It, it's a it's a great <laughs> service. They they'd make a great advertiser. Actually. I like Trim. It's a, it's a really I do. Cool, I like yeah. it. It's and it, you know, it's one of those things, another one I signed up for, but it's free, right? Yeah. It's free. It's a I terrible think. name. Trim, yeah. Yeah. But it's one of the few messaging bots that actually I actually like. Yes, that's what it is. Everybody's talking about messaging bots and they're boring usually yeah. and useless. This one is actually really good. Yeah. Well, you could also take, I mean, like, so I can pull from like, I guess it's Quicken my spending habits from my credit yeah, card. So Mint, I can say, Mint will tell you this, for instance. Mm -hmm. Now imagine this is an echo skill. So you yes. can be like, hey, A, hey, Lady A. Yes. What did I spend on Amazon? Oh, I like Lady A. Let's call her that from now on. <laughs> sure. I like that. There you go. Nice job, Lady A. And then uh, 
S I R I could be Lady S. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, if, if Siri, you know, we call Lady A Madam A, but I'm thinking Siri is actually more like a Madam S. Madam A. Madam S. Because no. Lady A sounds better because yeah. the A A. Yeah. And then I'm still going with Hey G until we come up with something. Hey G. Better. Hey G. <laughs> Mr. G. Sonny G. OG. G. Do we want to talk about, no, because it'll depress everybody. Online privacy rules? No, let's not talk about that. <laughs> I, I did a story about what it means for the Internet of Things. <laughs> what does it mean should, for the Internet of Things? Is should you good? care? Is there anything good? Um, uh, no, no. Here's, here's some not. good news. The Minnesota Senate, and I, I suspect this is what will happen, it, uh, has voted 58 to 9 to pass Internet privacy protections. So that yeah. may be the best side of this is that the states might get involved. Yeah. But then you'll have to move to a state where your privacy is I was going to say, Texas, Texas is gonna, never going to do you're that. You're not going to get that one, no. I, I mean, I don't think that's necessarily that terrible of a thing. I think that I, generally, I think that, for example, California is moving heavily on, more heavily than it would have on environmental protections. And they're probably going further than the nation would uh even if we had somebody who, a president who is really into environmental protections. And so if California does, does certain things, it's very influential nationwide because there's such a big state. And so the California environmental protections are not only going to reflect the values of the state, but they're also going to influence other states. So I don't think it's a, the worst thing. That no, states if, are a, more big, if a big state thing. does it, then uh, every, other, every, other, every company has to kind of adhere to it if they want to do business in that state, right? Yeah. So Comcast yes, is national... Is you know, which is why everything I buy has a sticker telling me things in it are classified as poisonous or cancerous. It's because of California. us. Yeah, pro, it's, I'm yeah, like, oh, yeah. California. The world's yeah, famous Prop, Prop 60 warning. Prop 60. It's so ridiculous. You can't go into a garage without being warned that inside there are poison. There are things known to the state like, of California that kill you. My Christmas lights. I'm like, oh. <laughs> and this <laughs> is an example, uh, uh, not only of a bad regulation, and this was one of the propositions, you know, so that we have this yeah. proposition yeah. process that's really broken, but. But it's also an example of, and I remember this when I was a kid, that we went to a power plant, a coal-fired power plant in Providence, Rhode Island, where I lived. And, uh, you know, and I was at, already, I was a trouble, I was, you know, I said, why are all those dead fish in that uh, cooling pond? And the guy said, no, 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 let's look over here. But one of the other things I saw was everywhere in the place they saw, I saw signs that say, conserve, save energy, green and this was in the 70s, early, maybe late 60s, green. I ecology guess, now. Ecology now. And I asked my teacher, this is a coal-fired power plant. <laughs> what? <laughs> she said, because it dulls you to the notion. So the yeah. more you see this stuff, the less it means. So this Prop 60 warning, in effect, dulls you to the idea that you're surrounded by poisonous chemicals. And as a result, you pay no attention to it any longer. The net result is that exactly like there are no signs. Exactly. The, the eyes glaze over. Not only no signs, but no regulations. Exactly. Damn them. So did we talk about, I think we did, but I don't know if we did the whole thing. Ashley Feinberg's amazing detective work in Gizmodo. Did we talk about that yeah. last week? We did, we did not talk. Well, I wasn't here last week. Oh, so you don't know. I don't know. Were you here? Uh, no, I wasn't here either. <laughs> I wasn't here. Nobody was here. So uh, I apologize <laughs> to all the listeners who were here, but we didn't talk about it. This, this is why privacy on the internet is so important. We know... Oh, you didn't, you didn't talk about it because it came out on Thursday. Okay, good. We know uh, that you can have anonymized search results and go through them. In fact, somebody did a study. They took a pile of anonymized search results and they were able to identify the searcher 70% accuracy, uh, the searcher of those search results just by looking at the search results. There is no such thing as anonymous stuff on the internet. If you have the data, you can figure out who it is. So Ashley Feinberg, who's a brilliant reporter uh, at Gizmodo, and she does a great job, did some investigation. And it all came from the fact that the uh, at the National Intelligence and Security Alliance Leadership Dinner, the, uh, the director of the FBI, James Comey, said he had a secret Twitter and Instagram account. He was... It was just an anecdote. He's talking about stars. And of course, if you're the director of the FBI, you probably don't want, you know, you might have a public account, but if you want to like have a social account just for you, you're going to make it, you know, secret. And of course, Ashley said, hmm, how secret is that? Uh, well, he gave out a few details that were 
helpful. He said, for instance, his Instagram account has only nine followers. Hmm. Uh-huh. So <laughs> Ashley says, who am I to say no to a challenge? So the only fact that he, the only hint he offered about Twitter was that he has to be on Twitter now, meaning the account would likely be relatively new. And he learned, she learned a lot more about, uh, you know, the Instagram account. He says, I treasure my privacy and security on the internet. Ironic. My job is public safety. He's the guy Comey has a, uh, taped over his uh, camera as well. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, Instagram isn't conducive to custom searching. There was no way any of his five children or wife would be using their full names. Twitter, however, gives us a little more leverage, she writes. After some trial and error, I found his 22-year-old son, Brian Comey, seems to have the largest online presence as a basketball star at Kenyon College. Go Lords! It wasn't easy to find Brian Comey on Twitter, though, because his first name is also the middle name of his father, B-R-I-E-N. Helpful to have an unusual spelling. Uh, so after a few frustrated attempts, uh, attempts, I've tried the following Twitter search on a whim. Brian Comey minus James. So that would get all of the Brian Comey mentions without any references to his father. This led me to a tweet from the Twitter account of Kenyon College, the basketball team, showing... Comey teaching basketball to some school kids and at mentioned the now dead Twitter account at Twitterfuzz. <laughs> that account appears to have been previously owned by Brian Comey. At least if you believe the folks on Twitter congratulating Twitterfuzz for his dad's ascension to the head of the FBI. That seems like a smoking gun there. That led her to this Periscope video of Brian Comey. Clink through the linked photo. You'll find that a well-wisher has left a comment in which Brian Comey's tagged. Now, our FBI director has trained his son well. His Instagram account is locked down. Instagram itself, however, offers a little loophole that is terrible for user privacy, but wonderfully helpful for our purposes today. She created a fake Instagram account, actually has a fake Instagram account, which she keeps for tracking uh, Donald Trump Jr. and Newt Gingrich. <laughs> I don't know why. So using that anonymous account, Ashley requested access to Comey's account. As soon as I did... This popped up. This is the really great one. Suggestions for you, since you requested Brian Comey, maybe you'd be interested in his mom, Patrice, or this weird Reinhold Niebuhr account, <laughs> among others. Hmm. Hmm. Comey plot is... Thickens. Mm, the plot thickens. Patrice is Comey's wife, so she knew these were Comey's. Among these various Comey's, only two of the suggested accounts lacked both real names and profile photos. And only one had anywhere near the nine followers James Comey collect, c claimed to have, and that was Reinhold Niebuhr. This account is private. I, I wasn't sure it was James Comey, but a Google search turned up this article on Comey's time at William & Mary. By senior year, Comey was a double major in religion and chemistry, writing a senior thesis on theologian Reinhold Niebuhr, who, incidentally, I think, is also Barack Obama's... Barack Obama's favorite theologian. The thesis also covered uh, Jerry Falwell, the televangelist. It's a weird combination. Yeah. Reinhold Niebuhr was a pastor who wrote the Serenity Prayer, among other things. He was also a, a, a prolific writer. So she feels like, okay, I got it. I, I, that's the Instagram account. So she goes back to Twitter, and you know what? There's an at Reinhold Niebuhr who tweets, among other, other things... <laughs> Last year, what's the point of watching fully clothed beach volleyball? <laughs> okay, right there, I would have said that couldn't be James Comey. Fortunately, there are only seven accounts on Twitter currently using some variation of that name. So she found all of them. And only one seemed to be operating in stealth. Ah, see, this wasn't this this volleyball one was one of the non the non stealthy ones. This one wasn't though. Project Exile Seven. Got an egg. Joined in February 2014. Project Exile 7 hasn't tweeted. Hmm. How to be sure there's only one person currently following the account. Benjamin Wittes of Lawfare. Now, Wittes is no Twitter neophyte, she says. He's an active user, 25,000 followers. He only follows, you know, a, a thousand or more accounts, which means he doesn't automatically follow everybody. If he's following a random egg and is the only account following it, there's probably a reason. Well, maybe it's because he's a personal friend of James Comey. Project Exile, remember that was the, the actual Twitter name, Project Exile 7, turns out to be a federal program James Comey helped develop while he was a U.S. attorney living in Richmond. 
Project Exile 7 follows 27 other accounts, mostly reporters, news outlets, government, law enforcement accounts, and writers for the New York Times and the Washington Post, all of whom have been covering the FBI investigation into Trump's contacts with Russia. Hmm. Donald Trump is on there, but Project Exile 7 seems to have been begun following him relatively recently. His first follow was the New York Times. There are two outliers, William and Mary News. Ooh, Comey went to William and Mary. And The Onion. <laughs> Good, I'm glad to know James Comey follows The Onion. Oops. Now what have I done? I clicked something. You're recording a bunch of videos now. Your DVR is going to fill up. What is going on? I know, I might be. Help me. Help me, Mr. Wizard. Okay, back to the... Back to the story. I'm sorry this is so long, but it's such a good detective. She did such a good job. 39 yeah. tweets the account has liked. See, you don't have to have any tweets to leave a paper trail on Twitter. Eight refer directly to the FBI or Comey himself. So you can even find this all out. It's really easy to find out. These are all the things he's liked. One deals with an active FBI investigation. Four refer to the Trump administration in general. Boy, Ashley Feinberg. None of this is proof, of course. Uh, take what you will from the fact that the director of the FBI appears to have liked a tweet from New York Times about Mike Flynn and Jared Kushner meeting a Russian envoy in December. We've reached out to the FBI for co comment and we'll update when we hear back. In the meantime, Project Exile 7, I would love a follow. So. Wait, what did, what did Witty say? <laughs> when he what said, I actually commented earlier today on Comey's Twitter account on Twitter, no less. Beyond that public statement, I have nothing to say. He says, day 70, I've been ignoring all the speculation about Comey's Twitter account, but this one's pretty damn funny. Let's see. And then he, he re refers to this tweet, and she's just laughing at the tweet that this is James Comey's, James Comey's uh, Twitter account. Ah. Uh, FBI's statement, hello, we don't have any comment. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> But, At least it wasn't, we have spoken enough about James Comey's Twitter account. Isn't that, I know what you're talking about now. Uh, yes. uh, so what do you think? I think she's right on. I think there's too many coincidences yeah. in that. Yeah, I, I think, think that's... I think it is. And I don't but bring this up because we've learned anything. For sure. It's Right. It is, but it's great detective work. But it points out that there is this data cloud around you at all times that tells investigative reporters government agents, mm -hmm. marketers, more about you than you might imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and Twitter is a, is a is a wonderful tool for finding things out that you don't think you'd be able to find out. And one of the best examples of that, of course, is Nick Bilton's hatching Twitter, where he's giving all these accounts and describing the weather and what people are wearing and all this stuff. And he got all that data from Twitter by doing searches. Yeah. Uh, he's doing historical, like sort of painting a picture of things and and finding out who was where at what time and who was meeting with whomever just by seeing what people posted on Twitter. It's really a, a great repository of of random data about people that even the people who are using Twitter don't realize reveals them to be who they are and what they do and what they're thinking about and what they're who they're talking to and who their friends are and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Somebody, UOS DeWiz in the chat room said, wait a minute, Comey and Project Exile 7 are never in the same room. Oh, that's just <laughs> silly, Lois. <laughs> anyway, the point, the, I know that's a long way around just to point out that this is why privacy on the internet is important. Uh, we, I don't think there is any such thing as privacy on the internet. With uh, enough data mining, actually, you can find it anyway. Actually, a better point. A better point. <laughs> Sorry, if you, Leo. If you're putting it on the internet, you're, it's in public. Even if you're James Comey, the director of the FBI, who presumably has some skills in OPSEC, doesn't matter. I know, I have a story that'll lighten the mood. AOL <laughs> and Yahoo have come up with a new name after the Verizon deal. Oh. They're going to call themselves Oath. What? Oath. O-A-T-H. Yeah. Oath. You can't even say it in a way that somebody knows what you just said. Oath? At least put the exclamation point from Yahoo after it. Oath. 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 Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> hey. Can you find that? Well, I, I can't Google, but maybe I can oath it. Yeah, that's not what it, <laughs> not yeah. a good name. Uh, why why did they choose? Did they explain why they chose that? <laughs> I mean, even if it's something dumb? like alphabet, whichever it's not the actual name, which alphabet is fine. Alphabet makes sense because you got A, but, B, C, D. That makes sense. But 
But oath is an actual word that presumably means something. Although apple, they named it apple because... Apples are friendly. They're nice. They're fruit. There actually is a long story about that. Oath. What is an oath? It's a vow. A yeah. pledge. They pledged the to keep your version data will be called oath of office. And this was, again, good... Uh, again, I got to give credit to the Business Insider uh, and uh, Avery Hartman's and Julie Bort. Good detective work. They found this big scoop. And because of it, AOL CEO Tim Armstrong ended up tweeting, yep, billion plus consumers, 20 plus brands, unstoppable team, hashtag take the oath of a rising company. Not an exclamation mark this time, a colon. <laughs> Kid you, mm. <laughs> you not. A colon. Oath colon. <laughs> I'm going to oath wow. it. Colon. It should have been like oath, like question mark. Oath? And the same, like, why her? Her? <laughs> oath? Oh, well. I have nothing to say about that because it's just not great. Marissa Meyer will not be the CEO of Oath. And she's at this point, she's going, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the 50 million. I got to get out of here. I can't take it. All right, let's wrap it up. Anything else anybody wants to say? Any stories that I missed that you uh, we could talk about Uber? Actually, the big revelation I thought in this Uber story was that uh, Anthony Lewandowski, who left Google, uh, uh, the Google car, autonomous car, eventually what became Waymo, wasn't Waymo at the time, but left, took mm -hmm. documents and apparently attempted, or allegedly took documents and is uh, uh, accused of trying to bring his entire team with him when he went over to Auto, the auto autonomous truck startup, was then bought by Uber. Of course, Google suing Uber, saying, you know, Lewandowski took everything. One of the things we've learned in this suit, Lewandowski was paid $120 million by Google. And That's he good work still left. <laughs> well, yeah, I'd work for six months for $120 million. <laughs> Just be like, all right, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> A hundred for one month. We knew Google paid well. <laughs> I would literally push the self-driving car everywhere it went for that money. Million, million dollars. Wow. And Leo, he left. I need to talk to you about my pay. And he was unhappy. <laughs> he said, I got a better job over here. Okay. I want to work for with a more ethical company, so I went to Uber. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, at a certain point in time, money doesn't mean it's anything. It's meaningless. It's, it's meaning. It's big numbers that don't mean anything. But, but yeah. I wish I could be in that group of people, though. Don't you? Where 120 you know, million, yeah, it's just numbers. Yeah, I, I just, what would I do? I guess I could donate a lot more money. I read or heard somewhere that, that somebody calculated that 20 million, anything above 20 million dollars doesn't matter. Because you live in the same house, the same you eat at the same restaurants, yeah. you do all the same stuff. It's like beyond twenty million. After the first twenty million, it's all just the same. That's what uh, comedian Dana Carvey said. You know, he made his fortune on Saturday Night Live playing characters like George Bush, and he said, "Really, after a certain point, it just means you got a bigger bedroom to watch TV in." Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of. I didn't cheer you up, did it, Leo? So, so that's not true, because then you can just buy bigger toys, like. At $20 million, you probably can't have your own private jet and have it be economical. No, that's true. But you could have a yacht. So, really? For $20 million? Well, not a big yacht. I mean, yachts take a lot longer <laughs> than jets to yacht. get anywhere. <laughs> You're right. See, $20 million is not enough. I got to keep working. You're right. Inflation. Inflation. Um, what am I saying? Okay. Are we moving? Are we going? I'm getting hungry. Yeah, we're going. Are we, we're are done. Are we doing we're numbers done. and all that stuff? We're done. Yeah. Yeah. Numbers. Oh. You want to do a number? Go do no, do number. I got some token. quick ones just yep. to leave the minds boggled when we close on a high note. Okay, so comparing the market cap of Tesla and Ford, Tesla is now more valuable than Ford. Wow. Fifty billion dollars is Tesla's market cap as as of about an hour ago. Wow. And Ford's is forty four point seven billion. Uh, this is in part because Tesla had an amazing quarter. Okay, let's compare two other companies. Walmart's of course, is a retail giant. Uh, and their market cap is $218 billion. Amazon's is now $435 billion. Wow. Woof. Wow. This is the power of the of the tech slash digital slash algorithmically based uh, businesses. It even and, comes uh, with its own soundtrack. I like that about you. Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, uh, and yeah. then and then I have I have one last uh, mind-boggling number. The number is 800,000. What's that? 800 800,000 is the number of police officers in the United States. Roughly roughly, give or take 100,000. Uh, Axon, which is the company formerly known as Taser, has offered to provide every single police officer in the United States with a body cam and with the training and other infrastructure that would support that. They offered every single police officer a free body count How much? For, a, for a year. Uh, 800,000 is the number of police officers that technically would be covered if every single one of them took them up on their office wow. uh, offer. So that's kind of amazing, I think. Wow. In other words, I think that because of this stunt... I think we're going to see a lot more cops with body cams. I hope so. I think that already people are saying, well, that's a, you know, Trojan horse. We don't want to take it. Taser makes, I mean, Axon makes tasers, which yeah. a lot of police officers use. Right. Um, I, I would love, I would love, I think I've even said this on the show before. I would love for Taser to build a taser that has a camera in it that shows the tased victim in slow-mo as they're being tased. But that's just me. <laughs> for amusement purposes only. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, it could be valuable for leisure, or legal issues because they... Uh, like, but it's more fun than slow motion, watch. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, um, unless, it's, unless it's a reporter on a nightly news show doing uh, it for ratings, it's not funny. We did it uh, on the new screen, on the old screensavers. We See? tased Yoshi. We had the guy that's, with taser who was like dressed in a black suit with a black turtleneck. He looked like... Uh, We've blown like a guy water. that worked at Taser. Yeah, and he shot the uh, Yoshi. Yeah, Yoshi just giggled the whole way down. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy, what's your pick of the week? So I have a bunch of devices, but they are under embargo. So I have two things. One you're not going to believe in, but one is an actual app. So I don't know if this has existed for a long time, but. I came home last week from being at the Bluetooth World Conference and this was in my house and oh my God, it is awesome. This is a, it's a dish soap holder. Don't, don't hate me, you guys. An IOT dish soap holder. No, it is, it is not an IOT dish soap holder. It is, there's nothing connected. But instead of having our dish soap brush yeah. um, sit on the countertop, which yeah. is where it's always sat, yep. there's a little stand for it now. <laughs> I know, very low tech. It's only eleven fifty nine. It's, it's from OXO. Of course, it's from OXO. Yes. They're so good. So yes, I know this is not high tech, <laughs> and maybe this is has existed for a long time, but I have never seen one before, and I was really excited. I was okay. excited when I learned that you could put the dish soap in the handle, let alone that there's a stand. See, and now you don't have to have it like, you know, laying on the side, getting all grungy. Anyway, oh, okay. Hallelujah. So I, I also offer you a more tech thing. And this is not a new app, but it is an app that I've been newly playing with. <laughs> yes. So it's Fitstar, which. Oh, I love Fitstar. Fit Fit yes. Yeah, Fitbit Bottom. Yep. I have totally, like, I'm going to shell out the. I think I might just go for the whole year. You just want heck, Tony Gonzalez on your smartphone. I know you. I, yeah, actually, he is my preferred trainer other than the other lady. I know. He's cute. But, but yes, this is. Great, and I love the exercises, and I can do them in hotel rooms. And it's really good. I really and they time it, and they ask you how hard it was, and so they yes. can they can tailor it to your abilities. No, it's really good. I love Fitstar. It's the best of all these apps, I think. But it's super pricey, so I think I'm just going to do the forty dollars a year because otherwise it's like eight dollars a month. Yeah, that. Which well, I was like, forty dollars isn't price? bad for a year. That's not bad. No, that's great, but eight dollars a month felt like a lot. You know what I always say? It's cheaper than a heart attack. Yes. I always it's say also, that. <laughs> it's also cheaper than buying new jeans. So It's cheaper than even buying new jeans. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So, my, yes. my thing is another Internet of Thing, and it's just dumb, but it uh, comes from Dev.2, a, a startup, Andrew Buntine. He figured out a way to have personalized theme music play for all his employees when they entered the office. So what happens is your phone joins the office Wi-Fi. Turns out some routers offer a log of when people join and leave the Wi-Fi. And no, I'm playing it. You can play it. He's this is the guy's theme music. He's coming in. Listen. <laughs> he walks in the office and his theme music starts. 
That's awesome. And and it's an easy thing to do because if your um <laughs> if 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 your Wi-Fi router logs entrances and exits, he just wrote a little script that uh, grabs the log, uh, parses it, and then plays the appropriate music when somebody walks in. You got to do that at Twit. Isn't that a great? I know. I want to do this. Maybe we'll get uh, we'll get Father Robert and Brian to do it on Know How. That would be such a great project. Yeah. Play theme music when you enter the office. Ladies and gentlemen, and by the way, you could also use it to do time cards, but I would never do that. Ladies and, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this week in getting Leo really sad, but cheering him up at the end. And I want to thank our, uh, our, our, our partners, our team, for making that happen. Uh, Stacy, it's great to have you. Stacy on IOT.com, the IOT podcast she does with Kevin Tofels at IOTpodcast.com. Mike Elgin. Oh, Mike. He's going to Barcelona. Join get, us. Getting ready for gastronomad.net. Please, please. I just, I want to do this so bad. Maybe we'll next year. We'll get you out there on one of these. Yeah, the maybe Morocco one, I think, is the one I'd like to do, but uh, I have so many yeah. travels planned. I'm yeah, it's in a 400-year-old Riyadh. It's going to be fantastic. <sighs> oh, man. Are you going to have plain pasta so I can bring my kid? <laughs> yeah, we I will if you bring a, your kid. I have a kid like that, too. You spaghetti with butter, right? That's it. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, she'll, she'll eat... She'll sit through the restaurants that we go to. Right. But as long as there's spaghetti the with pasta. butter. Yep. Or a plain hamburger. <laughs> Not a bun. It's yes. disgusting. <laughs> What's wrong it with is. kids? Some people say that's how you taste the meat. I, I'm not one of those <laughs> I don't people. want to taste the meat. I want to taste the condiments. <laughs> I want ketchup and pickles and <laughs> tomatoes and everything else. Uh, I bet Mike Elgin's kids are gourmets, though. I bet, they, I bet, the, I bet the boys were brought up. And I know Princess Squishy Face will be brought up tasting she the will. finest food. She's already eyeballing the solid food, and just oh, you, you can tell she can't wait. Oh, <laughs> man. Well, she's lucky Grandma Amira going to make her anything she wants. Yep. We do this yep. week in Google every Wednesday, about 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern. That's 20.30 UTC. I'd love it if you'd join us live and join us in the chat room at irc.twit.tv or even come to the studio. As our three intrepid visitors did, just email tickets at twit.tv. We'll put a chair out for you. Of course, if you can't be here when we're here, you could easily get on-demand audio and video of everything we do at Twit on our website, twit.tv slash twig for this particular show. You can also subscribe. And man, uh, we're everywhere. Just find your favorite podcatcher and search for Twit. Subscribe to the shows you want, and you will never be lacking for fine entertainment on your portable device. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time on Twig.